Hello, I'm Dan McDowell, longtime professional broadcaster. Why subscribe to our Patreon podcast? Well, perhaps you support our struggle to get out from under the oppressive thumb of the man. Or objectively, if you sign up at patreon.com slash the dumb zone, you'll get the two episodes per week that are available on all podcast platforms like this one, plus an additional two episodes each week that are exclusive to Patreon. So subscribing on Patreon gets you four episodes per week. Oh my, what a bargain. Now, on to today's program. The dumb zone. The dumb zone. The dumb zone. Do not come. Do not come. I'm going to come. <laughs> oh. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That was my request. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. I never listen. What was that? Well, that's the current vice president and the former president having a conversation. Yeah, oh, it was on geez. Zoom. <laughs> no, actually, J- uh, Blake, that was edited. If you thought that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump Donald were having Trump sex and he was in, in, <laughs> in front of a crowd. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyway, happy uh, Monday, guys. What a weekend. I don't know. Seven. Seven straight, baby. And how many before you got there? Seven what? Titles. Why didn't you tell us? I just told you. Why didn't you tell us the the natty was coming up? I don't know. What, are you going to come out? Yeah. We've, we have before. I have. You have. I don't yeah. think Blake has ever supported you in anything you've done outside of this. <laughs> but yeah. No losses, baby. Scores? Closer than I would have liked. They seem to be getting closer. Yeah. They're nipping at our heels a little bit. Well, it's because they got to team up to beat you. You like the Warriors? And you get everybody's best shot. I'm a little older. You know, that's kind of the annoying part. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's let everybody know. Turn on uh, Ethan's mic. Oh, right here is, uh, we have a 690 sit-in today. He is Ethan. Yeah! Do you want to give your last name or no? Uh, sure. Stanfield. Like Marlo. Yeah. Lakeith. Good problems. No, uh... I like Lakeith. I think you just, yeah. You, yeah, it's also Lakeith, but... <laughs> is there, what's Mar- who's Marlo Stanfield? Oh, it's from Atlanta or something? Lakeith, That's Lakeith. is from Atlanta. Oh, okay. So, the Wire. I feel like you just pulled a, a I'm beady my, long... I'm getting my black guys confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jake situation. But yeah, no. It was uh, it was closer than I would have liked, Dan, but we got it done. So from what I understand, Ethan's claim to fame is he made the website... Uh, Day1DF.com. Day1DF.com. Now, is the yeah. one a numeral, or do you type out... The... In fact, it is the spelling O-N-E. Yeah. Okay. That's important. Can you yeah. grow a beard? I shaved this morning. I was going to say, because your face is just incredibly, baby, incredibly baby face. clean. <laughs> no. I can, I, I can hear it a little bit. You okay. get up close yeah. to it on that, that hug? <laughs> you, like, you'll get a welcome hug from Jake. Do we do we rub cheeks? I don't remember. I'm a hugger. <laughs> he is. Yeah, I'm a drugger. I love it. Um, Day1DF.com. That is That's how correct. you can s- determine your subscriber number. Yes. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's... A little more streamlined than a uh, open Google Doc where you, there yeah. are a hundred people typing at the same time. <laughs> when you when you sent that out, I was I was shocked because there was four hundred people trying to get their. Well, we don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but Ethan saved us. Yeah. See, that's the way we are getting better at things by we do something, we totally screw it up, and, and then like, someone <laughs> contacts us and say, "Hey, yeah. I can do this," and then they do it better, and it's like, okay, crowdsourcing. They're, they're iterating. That's what we say in the software biz. Boy, we got to remember that. <laughs> Iterating. That. Yeah. Iterating. I guess I've never thought of that. I thought reiterate was the only way you'd ever use the word. Uh, Not to go back to uh, my successes yesterday too much. Oh, he wasn't done. Back to... Uh, <laughs> I did something yesterday that I've never done before, which is... Uh, pick? Pick six? <laughs> no. Not talk trash? There wasn't a ton. A penalty-free game? I got one. 
every game he it's gets impossible for you not to get a penalty. <laughs> On the way home, I uh, I bought two bags of ice and put them in my bathtub and just took oh. like the full cold. I just filled it with cold water and just sat in there as long as I could. And I really think it helped. Helped like, what? Uh, I don't know if it's like recovery, inf- inflammation, or just you know. I mean, obviously, there's a reason athletes do like. Not that I'm an athlete, but that people do like cold tubs or whatever. But I actually think it helped. You're less sore. I think so. I think so because when I got home yesterday, two. I don't even know how we used to do. Like when Blake and I used to play together, sometimes we would play three games in a day. Oh, I would leave uh, your flag football to go play three games of softball. Yeah, and you're just like, how do, how do your legs do this? And we played two, and I felt like I was going to die. Mm-hmm. Like I got home, and I just I, – I literally felt as if I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. And it was it was worse than last year. Because, I mean, you play two every year in playoffs, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can notice that it's getting worse by year. Yeah. It's definitely getting worse by well. well the two of you leave day. it all out there, right? I mean, you, you're not. <laughs> eh, Jake does. I'll coast on you. He doesn't need, but he can. See, this know? is something you need he, to learn. You can park one at 350. In my portion of the Belichick book, their most recent Super Bowl win is against the Eagles, the first time they played the Eagles, and they were saying by then maybe that was their third Super Bowl win. I can't recall. The point is, uh, they were they were like they thought in retrospect the Eagles went too hard, too fast, weren't pacing themselves through the game, you know, didn't want to, couldn't leave anything for the fourth quarter, that kind of thing. So you're you're just like young Jordan or LeBron, you're sure. learning. Yeah, you you're, you're Donovan McNabb. Yeah, right. I also did vomit. So if that, yeah, yeah, yeah checks out. <laughs> Donovan McNabb wise, but yeah, the uh, the homemade cold tub. The Joe Rogan. The Joe Rogan. The Papa Joe. And how long do you stay in? It was you not... pop out and grab a shower after? Or? Yes. Okay. It was not more than, I would say, six or seven minutes. But I think it helped. Okay. Well, try as it. long as you think that. <laughs> I'm not going to try it. I, I fear cold. I can't do it. I'm no Wim Hof. Are you still doing that, Wim Hof? Yeah, mostly. See, I can't do it. I do it in the summer some. The cold shower? Yeah. Yeah. In the winter, well, I just, I can't. He's not just about the cold. He's also about the breath. Yeah, no, I I stop at the cold shower. What'd you guys do? Um, I'm going to work backwards. Sunday night, I watched the new show, Shogun. You guys uh, heard about this? I've heard, been hearing all about it. <laughs> Why do you pronounce it like that? Because I think you you're it. supposed to. Yeah, Shogun. It's not Shogun? No, because I think I said that, and then in the show they said Shogun. Oh, okay. I've always seen that. You notice I'm sitting this one out because <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I've just seen that word forever. <laughs> you same. And Shogun. Shogun. I said Shogun last week, but then as I watched the show, they said Shogun. Shogun. Okay. And now I seem educated like Ethan. You know, I actually have thought. I think you guys, you're a comedy, a sports, and an educational podcast. There's three categories happening. <laughs> we here. do learn. We do a lot of learning. Um, anyway, Just street learning though, not book learning. <laughs> it's supposed to be the next Game of Thrones, and so I thought I'd try to get in early. Um, and I think there are two episodes out now, and I watched episode one. Okay, I'm glad because I was thinking about jumping in. Yeah, it's um, me and the lady are looking for something to watch. I'm going to butcher all this because I don't know Japanese history, but they're like king dies, and then there are five families that are trying to get the throne. And so it's a it's a throne-chasing show in Japan. What's it on? FX. Okay. So Hulu as well. Hulu. Hulu. Not, a, not as risque as Game of Thrones, then. Um, there was some, there's some nudity <laughs> and a beheading. On the FX? Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's real easy to record through YouTube TV. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I wanted to, I miss that cultural impact show. Feels like it's waning. Yeah. 
And so, I don't know, the, the scores are really good, and I thought I'd get in. Um, and I think that's also why, um, since you missed that cultural impact show, you were so into Succession when it was on. Was that one? Oh, yeah. Cultural we were impact. all watching it. We were talking about it nonstop. And yet you... And we were like, you know what? It'd be really cool. Like a guest from Succession. Yeah. <laughs> like, everybody's talking about it. That would be really timely. It would be... To be fair, we did get Coral. At the very end of the whole series, <laughs> after badgering him over and like, we it was like, like the reluctantly. 11th, the 11th most popular. Right. Guy. I will book this guy. It was the probably the easiest guest you could have booked. Go but, ahead. How, but how did you get to the Sopranos party? Uh, um, for me, it was through Bob and Dan because I watched it way late. Mm. Because that was an early, oh, like, you mean like that was the, season the, one. How they were actually at yeah. the HBO thing. I Why thought would you they need to like promote the... Succession if it's the most popular show going? Well, I don't know. I mean, as The Wire was going, we would just get guys on throughout the whole, you know, we had Bodie one year, we had Bubs, we had, you know, we we, we had Marlo. We, it's weird, too, because... We uh, had, uh, who's the big one? Uh, Michael K. Williams? Yeah. No, no, we had him, but uh, he's now a really big, famous actor. Michael B. Jordan. Uh, not him. Who's the, 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 the drug kingpin? He, he took over for Marlo. He's on another couple other famous shows. He's black. <laughs> He's from The Wire. Okay, I'll figure it out. I never watched The Wire. I don't know why you... Uh, because I think you're getting your order of operations incorrectly. Marlo took over last. You're thinking of the guy who's also in... Uh... Stringer! Okay, yeah. Oh, we've had Idris Elba. Elba. Idris Elba? Uh, yeah. 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 The but, new Bond. But Marlo, Marlo takes takes from him. Oh, he does? Yeah. I thought... He... Marlo's the young the young kid. Okay, my bad. Who gets it? A... It's been a while. The point is, we had like 10 guests on from that show it, while it was a very popular show. And I think the other point, too, that Blake is making is, you know, why would they want to promote it? That's why you never see commercials for McDonald's or Coca-Cola. Oh, that's true. They're yeah, already they so popular. New, they have new products and they have an advertising budget. What's in it for the actor? Anyway. Uh, Shogun. You're enjoying good. this? Yeah, the nut kicking is just fascinating <laughs> to watch up front. And he's just staring straight at <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't pick one because I'm fighting both of them. I got to keep them in my peripheral. Yeah, it's constant. Uh, Sunday morning softball didn't go so well. Oh no, the Red Sox. Uh, no, no it's not the Red Sox. They're the Indians. We're the yeah. Indians. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Indian fever. They don't care about your PC. No, the your song did... mind virus. You're trying to infiltrate <laughs> the, us with. Don't know that term. <laughs> the team hat is a Chief Wahoo hat. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> the, the Indian fever didn't help pump you up. Uh, no, wait, we should play that before every game, shouldn't we? That's the problem. Um, and then, let's see. Um, okay, so Friday night, I'm going in, going in reverse. Wife and I went to uh, Hyenas in Fort Worth to see Chris Farley's brother. Oh, yes. <laughs> of, uh, uh, is it two plus one? In together. Is he from something? I don't know. He's There was a, there was a, a show on MTV many, many moons ago where they put together like a fake boy band. And he was part of it. I think it was called In Together or In Together Now or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And it's clear that he's Chris Farley's brother. Like, yeah, I think I've seen him before. Yeah. He's, he's pretty funny, too. Yeah, not bad. He looks exactly I haven't seen like him in him. comedy, like doing stand-up. I don't know where, where I've seen him. Um, How do you like it? He's okay. Um, kind of feel like he's just coattailing Chris Farley. Um, but he's got like the same facial expressions. I mean, why he's not? Fine. Use what you got. I know, but I don't know. I, I think we, and I discussed this with my wife, we've set the bar so high to where like the fat, past few times we've gone to see comedy, it's been Akash. Mm. And I think I went to go see TJ Miller. Mm. And so I don't think he's up to that standard, but it was fine. And we went to see... Um, Kevin James. Kevin I mean, James. That, he's even set the, the bar even, standard. even higher. Get to that. <laughs> but even like Kevin James, his brother opened for him and he was horrible. <laughs> He was all right. It was not good. It's a nepo comedian, but it, it did seem like you must be Kevin James's brother. Yeah, Gary Valentine is is not good. Um, I just hope you'll let us open for you someday. Yeah, and you're 45. When you're doing your <laughs> your special. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start with yeah. that 15 minutes first. It's <laughs> it was supposed to be a punishment. I know. And five minutes is not a punishment. Um, 
Okay, and then before that, though, we went to uh, my wife's aunt's birthday party who turned 80. Good Lord. And she had her party at a honky-tonk in Fort Worth. Billy Bob's? Guitars and Cadillacs. Guitars and Cadillacs. And much like I reported a week ago about the bumper sticker that I saw in Wichita Falls that said, I eat milf and cookies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, a guy was walking around with a... You know, the plus sign for a donor is just like a plus sign. Okay. Uh, his said orgasm donor. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like that. From the makers of Female Body Inspector. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. He was just walking around in that. But then I ran into the bathroom attendant Ooh. that I did not know was still a thing. Because no one carries cash. Yeah, no cash. But and you would, I would think the really high-toned hotel or yeah. restaurant. Strip club. Yeah. Strip club has them? For sure. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I'm not, as you know, not big strip club guy, but I'm pretty sure strip club, you're going to be able to buy, like, mouthwash. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Or whatever. What do you think about, like, they have a, you ever been in one that has a thing full of combs? Oh, yeah. In, like, the disinfectant <laughs> yeah. or something? Yeah. I just thought that was really weird. Yeah, he I had, was needing a comb. Yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> and Barbasol. Or well, you didn't yeah. grow up in an era, so we're close to eras, but we always have different things that are a little different. And I think you would not have been in this era. Some olds will remember. If you had a, it was a long comb that would stick out of the back of your pocket. It had a handle. Yeah. Did my, you? I no, but I definitely knew. Okay, I, that was an era. Yeah. Where we would go to school and everybody had a comb sticking out of the back of their pocket just in case you need to comb your hair. Yeah. And I was... And your rolled up cigarettes? I had one. <laughs> and you were dancing? You fighting. had one? I had a comb, sure. That's awesome. He had I, hair. I was trying to feather my hair. I remember it was like Mark uh, something had the best feathered hair. Mm. It was like a dude. And I would just look at his hair every day like, <laughs> man, I wish I could part my hair in the middle and feather it like that. Yeah, I remember them doing that in Greece. But didn't they have like a lot of hair product in? Yeah, but I didn't live in a... Well, I suppose some people did hair product, but I, I was just trying to feather it perfectly. Mm, okay. Um, which sounds as gay as it is. Yeah, <laughs> so did he offer awesome. you like a mint? Yeah, so he had, uh, I mean, just the most highbrow hand soap. Hand yeah. you a towel? Right. I really tried to avoid him. I mean, he was posted up like in the corner where you, like the first uh, sink, and I went around him over here and kind which of Which he knew. To- he knew. I, look, I don't have cash. I don't have, I don't have cash. I don't need your Tic Tacs. I don't need gum. I don't need you to hand me a paper towel. I want you to leave me alone. And so, yeah, I avoided him like the plague. He didn't have like a little Venmo scan? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know. I didn't look. I'm Was pretty he sure white? I've actually seen that. Yes. Okay, because that's another uncomfortable le- level if it's a... Uh, <laughs> mm, yeah. Not a white person. <laughs> <laughs> pick pick a minority. I'm just saying. It just seems a little weird. When you're in a place that is generally... A white place, but then it's a honky tonk. Hey, yeah, here's, here's the one guy that isn't white in here, and and this is he's uh, here to serve you. This is a little bit of a different dynamic, but I just thought of something I forgot to tell you guys about when I was in Mexico. I got a massage on the beach. Wow, I mean it was like twenty five dollars, <laughs> dude. <laughs> uh, I had yeah, okay, but like the fact that you know how there's like the trinket people, <laughs> yeah. That are like ever present in Mexico, the little kids. And sometimes they're Chicle. children yeah. selling trick- chiclets. Anything, well, putting it in a iguana on your shoulder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like just being bum rushed by by a, a person who's not white, and then being like, "Yes, I will now allow you to touch your body, service me for twenty five <laughs> or thirty dollars." This is, uh, you know, I've never felt like uncomfortable with the pedicure like Dan does. Like it's, I think it's akin to you to the shoe shine. I've always thought, which I just don't. There'd be the shoe shine guy at the airport. Airport, yeah, and he's usually not white, right? And I'd probably never go to any shoe shine guy, yeah. but I'm absolutely not going to a non-white shoe shine guy. <laughs> yeah, it just feels just really a, wrong. A, a black guy rubbing your feet at the airport, just yeah, yeah, can't, can't happen. Vietnamese woman. At least that's in, at least your, that's not in public. Though. Your warts or whatever is not. At least that's like in like a a you know a business, like yeah. at the airport. Like any manner of people can just see you. But it did feel a little bit weird to be like, yes, rub me. 
boy? And then I was like, yes. Mexican boy. Was he a a man, like a your uh, age type thing? Or younger he, than me. Not just a kid? He was not a kid, but he was definitely not like, you know, he was probably 25. Was it couples? Yeah, but the weird thing about it was we both did it, but they were like, you know, I don't know if you've ever done like a couple's massage before, but typically the way it goes, like if you're at like a resort or something is like you go into like the, the actual spa and they're playing like Inya. Mm-hmm. And it's, this is not that. There were like eight people <laughs> just like in a row under these tents. So it wasn't really. It was oh, cu- you went to their tent. Yeah. Okay. They weren't walking around. They were in there. Well, they were walking down to the beach when you were walking by and they were like, you want to come up here? Okay. And so we did that. Like, yeah. It wasn't intimate. It was not intimate at all. Was, did, did he know what he was doing? Uh, You know, it was fine. He's no Gary. He was, I mean, Dude, there's I th- one Gary. I think about Gary all the time. <laughs> Again, it was it was like $30. It was $25, $30. It was not... You got what you paid for. But it was funny to listen to like... Uh, there were a couple of other people there, as I've told you, from Canada, <laughs> who were uh, really, really mean. To... Their massage masseuse. guys? Yeah, or ladies. Ah, like uh, Just overly like, n- no more of that. That's not the Canadian way. I learned a lot about the Canadian way. <laughs> they can be a little more demanding than you think. Mm. But yeah, the bathroom attendant's still out there. I was surprised. My, besides our big business meeting that we had on... Saturday, actually, Jake hosted. Uh, Shout out to Weinberger. That's right. Weinbergers. Good dudes over there. Huge, huge P1, or whatever we are. Well, I know they were P1s when we were on the ticket. I'm not sure if they subscribe or whatever now. But we do get recognized, and I'm always really surprised that they have a sandwich up, printed (laughs) on the board, and it's been up there for years. Called a Pugs and Kelly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know who that is, Blake? Uh, I guess not. Pugs and Kelly were a radio show in Dallas. Mm-hmm. 15, 20? At least 15. Years ago? Yeah. And they were on 105.3. Were they the talk that rocks at that point or the something? Yeah, and I think they moved around a couple times. Pugs and Kelly did. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was just your basic, like variety type. I can't remember if they were on talk. against mm-hmm. Bob and Dan or against. The At hard one point, line. I'm almost certain they were on against you guys. Okay, but they, you know, yeah, they're fine. Did they, I think maybe they were before Russ Martin or something. Yep. Like they led into him, and you know, not really a big ratings threat or anything, as I recall. But they were out there. It was guy talk or something, and. Y- y- that's just why it always seems odd to me every time I go to Weinberger's. Like, huh? Yeah, you, they have. Uh, look at the. Where's the Dan McDowell? The they scoreboard have, is. <laughs> they have two. Like, they have two sandwiches named after uh, local luminaries. One of them is Pugs and Kelly, and the other one is Mark Cuban. Which makes sense. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's a layup. So it just it does always print a bit weird the disparity between. <laughs> is the Pugs and Kelly sandwich more popular than Pugs and Kelly now? Boy, that's a good question. Got to be. Surely. Where are Pugs and Kelly these days? I actually think they filled in recently on The Freak. Okay, but they're not. And that sounded like a punchline, but it wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think they have uh, like a full-time show anywhere. Okay. Well, that means they probably have a podcast. Yeah, that probably does. They're right next to us. Yep. Um, yeah, besides the big meeting that Blake joined from a kid's birthday party. Yeah, sorry. It wasn't okay. your kid. No, no, I'm saying I'm crediting you. Like, I can't the believe you even popped in for Jake was like, don't even call him. Let him have a day off. I was like, yeah, I need some questions answered, though, that Blake can uh, answer. So. Yeah, I, I just popped a headphone in and just allowed me to hang at the edge or the exterior of the party, which I didn't mind. It wasn't your kid. No. Okay. It was just friend or whatever. Don't no, give but too much credit. No, but any any time you can get a kid in a bounce house and playing with other kids, I mean that buys you a pretty good nap during the day. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So besides that, which we again inched forward, 
we're moving forward. We're going at our own pace. In fact, we have big business meeting today. Mm-hmm. We have to, so one hour and 45 minutes from now is our limit. We have a hard out. We have to hit the road, head to Dallas. For big, the big city. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, but I was just going to tell you the one thing, since you mentioned a TV show you started watching, I finally watched. Oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Go that, ahead. That reminded me of something. Uh, it was your birthday this weekend. Well, we'll get to that. I'll watch something for you. Office Space. Wow. wow. Pretty good. Okay. It was a very enjoyable watch. Yes. Michael Bolton, funny. <laughs> Peter, a little weird. Like, I don't know if, if it was the hypnosis or what, but he just kind of seemed spaced out the Peter, whole time. Peter, what's happening? His wife left him. It is the hum- hypnosis. Yeah, That's yeah. the whole point. Okay. The hip- point is he remained hypnotized because the, uh, the guy had a heart attack during the middle of it. He never yeah. clapped him out of it. Yeah. Okay. That's All like right. the main plot point. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> or a pretty important. It changed his whole attitude. Yes. Yeah. It, it's what, okay. Yeah. He was, he was not that guy before. He's in the middle of being hypnotized. And then he's like, you know, when I clap, you'll be out of this. That's why he's able to talk to the bobs the way that he does. Yeah, yeah, he just doesn't I, care. Okay. I guess I just didn't remember enough of the movie before then to say, like, oh, there's a big change in character here. Mm. Okay. Um, but I just thought the whole movie, it was like the three of them was the three of us, which I thought was cool. <laughs> I would be Samir. They're idiots. <laughs> uh, yeah. They're well, trying to figure stuff out, and they don't yeah, do it just, right. Yeah, just, you know, fighting the man, and um, yeah, nothing goes right, and, and hopefully at the end it all works out. <laughs> um, in fact, we've had... Uh, what is it, uh, McGinley? What's his name? John C. McGinley? Mm. Yes. Uh, one of the Bobs. The Bob. We've had him as a guest. Okay. You yeah. know why? Because we just liked that movie and we're like, hey, we should oh, book geez. somebody from the movie. <laughs> you know, you've also you also had O-Face on. Oh, the O-Face guy. Drew? The waiter? <laughs> not the no, waiter. No, no, not the waiter. The, yeah. the guy in the office. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> blonde hair. Uh, yeah, but them beating up the copier... I think was my favorite part. Did, did you hear quotes that you've heard forever? And you're like, oh, that's oh, where that comes from. I mean, from. several, yeah, gifts and memes. Yeah. yeah. In the case of the Mondays, I, I knew it was from that. Michael Bolton. We've had her Lake. on, but it was just a lucky chance. She was walking through the uh, the ticket offices one day. I recall that, actually. And someone was wow. like, hey, that's she's the girl that they were whispered. She's the girl that was uh, an officer. In. Let's go. That's Let's awesome. talk. You know, uh... <clears throat> The character from that movie that uh, that I think it's mentioned the least is they had the Sprite guy sell in the magazines. <laughs> or is it 7-Up? Oh, Orlando Jones? Yeah. He was uh, Clifford Franklin in The Replacements. What am I going to do with 48 subscriptions to Vibe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's in that movie for like 15 seconds. Yeah. The crackhead. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it, yeah, it was filmed at 635 <clears throat> Lumber. in the tollway. We've had Lumberg. I think you did have Lumberg. That's yeah. right. Wow. Okay. Uh, yes, and I told you you're going to... In fact, you made fun of me last week when I'm like, hey, there's some th- scenes filmed in here. It's cool to see. I really did, and I rewound it. Like, hey, say, oh, my God, it's hey, Preston look, Road. I've been right there. <laughs> yeah. Traffic was... is bad there. <laughs> it's funny, too, because I used to have a buddy who worked, like, right there, and he hated his job, and his entire existence was just exactly like that movie. And, like, I'd go have lunch with him or whatever, and it's just like, boy, this this specific little part of town <laughs> Just feels like I hate my job. Yeah. <laughs> you know who else we've had is uh, Mike Judge. That's true. To talk about that so and many. other things. See, I think part of this too was the GBL. <clears throat> part of it. Because we, like the O-Face guy. We're never booking the O-Face guy out of nowhere. But he was on the GBL list, so it's like, all right. Are you sure? I think he was on the GBL list, but I'm not sure. I have a lot of false memories, as you know. Well, thank you, Blake. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. I just thought. That's great. No, I was just going to tell you real quick. I think the movie I watched, uh, it was kind of uh, viral. It was a, it was well-known a couple months ago, but it was uh, Leave the World Behind on Netflix. Julia Roberts. Out. Come on. That's it? You just got to say Julia Roberts? Out. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, I thought she was possibly the weakest link of the movie, but I thought overall, good movie. I saw that. Did you? Yeah, where the... 
they're they go to the house in the Hamptons or whatever. The little girl likes yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a sales pitch for you, Jay, uh, Blake. I like Ethan Hawke. The little girl likes friends. It, Ethan Hawke and Kevin Bacon, which are kind of the same person sometimes. That's a good point, actually. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Very similar. Yeah. Do you like the ending? I love the ending. Yeah, it was good. I thought it was a very good ending. It wrapped it up. Um, but yeah, so if you have some time to kill and you want to watch that, I would say that it is worth it. I watched a decent amount of SNL. Okay, I didn't watch any this week. With Sydney? Yeah. I don't know. Was she funny at all? Or I don't. I, I did not think so, but... okay. I, I mean, obviously, she's on there because of her giant jugs and all that. Yeah, and I, which are I, great. I think somebody's made the point. I don't want, actually, I don't want anybody thinking I'm not <laughs> um, on board with giant jugs. Yeah, it's, I. You know, I think it's actually disrespectful to real giant jugs. It's really more that she's just like extremely willing to show them off. I feel like the real heavies are getting disrespected by the fact that. Do you think they're fake? No, they're definitely not fake. Oh. Because she's actually told that story before about, like, did you ever know a girl? Uh, I knew a girl in high school who uh, eventually got, like, a breast reduction, a la Superbad. Slapping God in the face. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, she told her mom in high school that she wanted to do it. And her mom was like, don't. <laughs> Just wait. Because you're going to need this. It's not going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's mostly just that she's... Although, remember, we've had a discussion. There is Too Hot, where it actually does hurt if you just want to be taken seriously, <laughs> Yeah, blah, probably, blah, 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 that stuff that you hear girls say. It sometimes. probably depends on your field. And you've always, I mean, as a misogynist, had that opinion. <laughs> um, but, you know, you and I have both talked before about occasionally, like, you'll have, like, a really attractive female doctor... Or dentist or something, you're like, okay, well, it's not like it's impossible. True, but I also think being a doctor or a dentist and a lady, whatever your number is, and I don't like to label ladies, but let's say it's a five, she it shoots up to a seven or an eight <laughs> right away because you are that. Like, if you add in, I mean, I would honestly that you tell could you- also support me. <clears throat> that's that's huge. It's yeah. not the intelligence; it's the financial. Well, I mean, yeah. all of it, yeah. <laughs> the intelligence is, is a big part of that. Because then she could make decisions that I don't I don't want to mm. make decisions. Right. Yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't find her uh, to be that dynamic of a personality. However, I am a huge fan of Casey Musgraves, who was the, uh, the musical guest. Every skit was about how she's an attractive girl. Yeah. Like, do you remember when they had Katy Perry host? Oh, yeah, the... The jump the up and down, the yeah, Elmo like, scene. It yeah. just felt like everything they were doing was like the Hooters sketch. Yeah. yeah, I I was thinking after seeing all the jugs hanging out memes and everything of her on the Soch, like Milana Weintraub. When we talk about that, and you were like, "Is she buttoning up too hard on the too high on the the commercials?" I I, I feel like I'm still a bigger fan of Milana. And maybe part of it is that they're just not hanging out and hitting me in the face. Is that an old man thing? Because it's kind of no, cool. I don't think it's an old man thing. Just but a I, little something to the... The, the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing that, well, if you are with her, like, man, they're they're for me. <laughs> with her? <laughs> no, if, if you're if you're hooked up, if you're boyfriend okay. or yeah. whatever, in I'm just saying. In a loving, respectful relationship. Yeah. yeah. Then, then those are for me. She's not firing them out for everybody. And that's why, you know, if you get a boyfriend looking at you sideways because you glanced at some girl's jugs that are hanging out, you're like, wait, wait. Is she trying to show them off or not? Am I not allowed to look? I mean, I think there's a an element of uh, sh- showing them not just for somebody else to, like another male to get the gaze, but also just to, like, feel confident. A lot of it's for other women. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I know that you were like. It's on so this, deep. No, no, I'm. This, I, I want to know what... this ownership angle. <laughs> <that you> were... <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's zip through this and then we'll get to Jerry Jones. I want to just because. Hey, everybody! It's time to answer some of today's viewer mail. Wow. I do. Let's see. 
Now, I have a ton of mail that has been actually mailed here, like real mail, here to the den, high atop my garage. But let's do that tomorrow, because I think we'll put out a video tomorrow. Okay. I'd like you to see some of it on the camera, on a video. But we we recorded out of order last week, and we actually, gosh, Friday, I forgot about what we did Friday. <laughs> How could so you? So <laughs> we recorded just about six hours. Did, did you get the final time on that? Uh, no, but I can't. Uh, don't worry about it. Over five hours for sure. For sure. We, we were here a long time. With our lawyers. <laughs> were they here? Yeah. They were here. You wow. were sit, you're sitting right there where, uh, where, where they Liz wearing was. Their lawyer suits. The, to the varying degrees in which they wear lawyer suits. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> they Philip were had all his in, lawyer jeans on. Yeah. And uh, I probably wore my business jeans that day, too. I didn't want to be dressed down like I am today. Are you changing Uh, before the meeting today? Oh, yeah. Okay. Just make sure. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in my shorts right now, but the business jeans are are being pressed as we speak. Um, But so since we didn't do an actual show, I got a lot of birthdays and whatnot that have come in since Thursday, which was the last show that people think we did anyway um day four subby march 1st is my 41st birthday but whatever everyone has one of those from chris ivanovsky's i have hair uh air hotmail i've been waiting for months to send my birthday on march 1st only discover you guys have already recorded tomorrow's episode yesterday maybe you'll read this next week and yeah, 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 now that's yeah. now. Yep. <clears throat> Making his dream come true. That's right. It's my Cobra Moose birthday. Cobra Think Moose. sports nicknames if that's too vague. Something Who's Cobra? Funny. Kobe Lewis? Cobra. I barely missed it being my Captain America birthday by mere hours. Blake loves that bit. Yeah, 48. Okay. I think Moose, a much more identifiable yeah, local I, yeah. <laughs> athlete okay. than Cobra. Cobra All I want Lewis. for my birthday is to convince my wife to let us have a remote at our bakery in Decatur, huh. even yeah. though our demographic is more middle-aged white lady from Brandon. Well, we don't discriminate. Don't you think middle-aged white ladies like us? I mean, I know I like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's your demographic. I was going to say, yeah. That feels right up my alley. I'll come taste your pastry. Dumb zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to wish my longtime friend and day one DF, Matthew Makestad, a happy 30th. Leader is Uncle Gatmail and his fascination with home plate. More Blake dating app advice from day two, number 2124, Max B. Max All because B. of you, Ethan. He knows yeah. that he's number 2124. Uncle Hottie, day two, subscriber number 1602. Would have been day one, but I was too busy banging Blake's mom. <laughs> okay. Today is my Andre Karolinko birthday. AK-47, baby. My heroes are November Ghosts and Blake's dating app tips. Um, okay, so he has a long extended... I'll, I'll read part of what he wrote next. This is a long email. He says, I don't really want to do Blake's job, but uh, here's a bit... <laughs> <laughs> that I bet nobody else in the comedy podcast game does. Or maybe they all do. I don't know. I usually listen to recreation podcasts. He says, listeners <laughs> listeners can send in their stand-up bits for you guys to mock and ridicule or maybe give an acknowledgement that when they are funny to justify their lifelong conviction that they are hilarious. And uh, he sent a bunch of bits, but I'll just read the one. He says, my soulmate, the love of my life, Died after a very short battle with SIDS, I'm assuming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's rough. Gotta laugh for me. <laughs> he then says, Les Blake from DF Mark. And that's the guy that had sex with Blake's mom? Or is that a di- that was the guy before? Yeah, I no, think. No, that's the guy that's had uh, <clears throat> nothing but terrible ideas emailed the show. Ooh. So Ooh. why don't you just pocket that 690? <laughs> And keep it and go spin it somewhere else. Damn. 
This what sounds like a guy who doesn't. That's owe a different guy. <laughs> He's not the guy going to do the Blake owe lawyers. Lots it also, of sounds like a guy <laughs> who doesn't one. owe a lawyer any money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Blake. We don't want anyone to pocket their six ninety. I anyway. always, I always think of stand up premises, but I can't think of the actual punchlines. Was... It's probably a big part of the whole. Yeah. Procedure. I was, I was thinking about, you know, did you guys ever growing up when you were going to if you went to church? After church, you'd go to a fast food restaurant, and you're all dressed up still. Mm-hmm. And there's like, you're at Whataburger at 11, and there's just, you know, every kind of person in there, and you're all dressed up, and you're like, this is really weird. That's the whole premise? That's the premise, but where's the joke? I don't know. There's not one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's relatable. <laughs> I feel like it's a pretty good premise. <laughs> I'm not changing careers. Just <laughs> <laughs> he stuck it out there. He did. Uh, Dan, day two, DF number eight fifty. My birthday is also March third. Maybe is a joint birthday present. You could tell us about Anne Frank again. Heil Uncle Hotmail from Janae. Yes, Ryan? my birthday was March third. Um, I remember when I used to have to care about that. Uh, well, I do want to. The only mention I want to give is uh, to Adam Romo at Eatsy's, who... Yeah. The weird thing is, my uh, Clemson daughter texted me at midnight when it actually became my birthday. My uh, France daughter texted me in the morning, about 8 a.m., but it was pretty late in France, I guess. My mom texted me at 9 or so. Rose? Uh, Rose did not text me. My... A lot of friends texted me. Not you guys. I was very hurt by that. Because <laughs> I that love was, getting a birthday text from a dude. Yeah, that was our gift, was leaving you alone. <laughs> Are, do you hate like when somebody who... How do I describe this person? You know them and you're friends with them because you employ them. Like our, uh, what do you call, like, financial guy? The financial guy that every year for Christmas they'll send, like, a uh, gift basket yeah. or something. And you're like, oh, okay, cheese. Or whatever. And it's, it's <laughs> like, you're the only reason they're sending it is because you work with them right. and they it's, work with your investments and all that. It's not that dissimilar from getting, like, a happy birthday email from, like, Eddie Bauer. Right, so no, I got a ton of those. A ton of, because you got to put in your email. Yeah. Your dentist. Yeah. But when he gives a call and you know it's, well, it's only because, I don't know. Yeah. It just seems disingenuous. Well, I, uh, for no other reason than I no longer work there, I deleted the bad radio calendar from my phone. Uh-huh. So I didn't have, I had no idea it was your birthday. <laughs> See, I put in yours in my phone and Blake's I mean, I had all of them like synced up of like, and there was a list of guests that I wanted to get. But I mean, it pops up when, when it's your birthday. To... I got a little birthday cake on my iPhone and, mm-hmm. and it says Jake's birthday. I used to have to track down Beverly D'Angelo. Good guest. <laughs> she was a great guest. She's great. I think I still have her email. Anyway, so happy birthday, Janae. And uh, thanks to Eatsy's Market and Bakery because uh, Adam yeah. Romo... I was going to say, all these other people. Oh, did I even get to the part? My wife at about 3 o'clock uh, comes up to me and goes, I'm so sorry. Ooh. I go, what? She goes, I didn't tell you happy birthday. Happy birthday. And I'm like, like she forgot about it until that moment. And you're like, well. <laughs> I uh, Yeah. There's one way to make it up. <laughs> but you're not wearing your knee pads right now. so. Knee pads. Uh, but I'll tell you where they are. <laughs> And I pulled them right out of my pocket. Hey, I had them. I happened to have these on. On me. Um, and then I have a March 4th birthday. Says Gutentag, day two, number 598. My brother, uh, brother Joel, a pathetic four digit DFer. Happy 41st birthday. Let him know he is the roach and he owes me $50. Okay. And uh, that's from Todd in Wiley. Do you know him? I don't. I, I wasn't either. talking to you. That's that's yeah. I was, <laughs> didn't think you knew him. You're not from Line of Wiley. Sight. <laughs> Where are you from, Ethan? Uh, originally Plano, but I live in Bryan College Station now. 
home of the Aggies, Aggie Land. Pretty familiar with where Brian is, but how's that? I and really like it. That? Well, nice price per square foot. It has a nice price per square foot over College Station for sure, and definitely over DFW. Um, we, it's pretty. We like it. Yeah, we like we like Brian College Station. It's chill. It's only about an hour and a half from Houston and Austin and you know Waco. <laughs> Got to be near Waco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the wonderful world of sports, radio sports scoreboard. Anything you want to touch before, Jerry? Um, Other than just my general Mavs. De- what's happening despair. with the Mavs? Tell us what's happening with the Mavs. They have a terrible coach. Because I saw a lot of that yesterday. I didn't watch the game. Well, they were like nine-point favorites, and they lost. Because Embiid was out? I mean, he's been out, yeah. Yeah, but and I'm saying... They were healthy. Yeah. And they they have a terrible coach. Was it here or there? Uh, here. it was here. Yeah. Didn't oh, okay. They, didn't they start eleven up? They 11-0? started out super positive. <laughs> yeah. And I was listening to it on the radio first. I went back and watched the game this morning, but it was like, you know, Coop and Brad Davis trying to do the, you know, the first home game after a road trip. And it's like, how many excuses to, can we come up with for? Tough to really get a up. It's a day game. It's just I don't know. I mean, why a lot is, of turnovers, right? Yeah, what? tons of turnovers and tons of points off turnovers. Why is everyone mad at Jason Kidd? The lineups are just a disaster. Like he he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, but I think we've we've kind of known that for a while now. So I don't know. I mean, they got better at the deadline, but there are just days like yesterday where you're like, they're always going to be held back by the fact that their coach. So was, him. The days of him complaining about the roster in a post-game press conference. Well, they wouldn't fix that. Not well, really I don't know it. about fixed it, but they definitely at least improved it whenever he was like, yeah, we need to call in the cavalry here uh, at the deadline. And, yeah, it sucks. Tim Hardaway bad? Tim Hardaway terrible. Tim Hardaway terrible for about the last month. That's kind of what you get with him, isn't it? Yeah. Like he's you never like the know. streakiest player ever. He can take over a game, and yeah. For some reason, like Gafford barely plays. I don't know. Why is he not playing every minute that Lively doesn't? You would think, but I think they combined for like twenty nine minutes. So you would think that one of you would think that one of them would be on the floor for forty five minutes of the game. Yeah. I don't know. I can't figure it out. Because kid loves Maxi. Kid loves Maxi, that's for sure. But Maxi was out, wasn't he? Yeah, I Ma- don't know. Uh, no, actually, yeah, Maxi played yesterday. He'd been out, but their rotations are just really, really weird. Kyrie didn't give him, you know, I mean, he gave him, you know, it was like twenty five, twenty six, but it takes a ton of shots. Luca got another technical. Luca got another technical. Cuban was uh, involved <laughs> in a fight with a ref while he was wearing his customary Mark Cuban Dallas Mavericks football jersey. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so bad. We have a Mavericks football jersey now. Somebody gave us one, right? Or a jersey tee? Mm, I have a Romo jersey tee. Oh, is that what, what it is? Of? Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. They're they're not very good. They're they're fine. See, because like right after the trade deadline, I thought it was thought of that. Oh man, this is a top four seed. They won seven in a row. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and now and now get, we're back to they're a bubble team. They'll get hot again. I still think they're probably worthy of not being in the play in, and they're always going to have a shot if Luca and Kyrie are healthy. But I also think they're always going to have the second best head coach in any game that they play. <laughs> How's my Luka MVP thing looking? I mean, he lit it up yesterday. There was a ton of talk about that on social. What? The Luka MVP. It's starting to come around a little bit. It's bubbling. Okay, I told you guys. Yeah. I told you guys. Let's just root for me once. How about that? I'm all for you. Okay, thanks. You hit on your Stefanski bit. And another one, didn't you? Purdy didn't hit. Purdy didn't hit. I had... I. Early in the season last year, I took Micah MVP because that would have got me like 
eighty thousand oh, dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you never know. Uh, although maybe you do know. That's a good segue, right, into Jerry talk. Sure. Because what did you tell us last week? Very confidently. Um, I thought that because of everything that had come out publicly, non-football related, uh, with the Alex Davis paternity test news, I thought that he would not speak at the Combine. Because there have been, there was at least one other time that he skipped either the Senior Bowl or the Combine because of something that was in the news. I don't recall what it was, but it was something, it might have been something related to this. Vegas drunk? Remember that picture? <laughs> that that might have been it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great picture. So I don't, I don't, I know he skipped at least one of these before. And maybe that was just scheduling related and had nothing to do with, you know, off the field issues. But I did not think that with that news coming out on whatever it was, Wednesday or Thursday, I did not think he was going to sit down and do the 40 to 60 minute bus thing. I figured he'd just let Steven do it. Maybe Will McClay steps in. But lo and behold, he did. Yeah. <laughs> he sat there with a... And it's great. It's 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 something I always wanted to actually be present for. Like, the media party's awesome. Like, getting to see Jerry hold court five drinks in is awesome. But getting to see him on the bus would be so great. Because they all have, like, a beer... Oh really? Oh yeah. You, yeah. Okay, I just listened to audio. I didn't see. Yeah, that's part of the deal. I mean, I've talked to people who have been on there. And like, there's just, a big cooler in there. Oh and, yeah. Hey, just grab a beer. Yeah. Because he did a couple times say we're all friends here. Oh yeah. We're all like that's. <laughs> oh yeah. The attitude Jerry gives. Well, since we're all friends, we started right off with what you thought they would not address. <laughs> um, yeah, the paternity test which is apparently achievable via a cotton swab on your cheek right you do not have to uh, rub one out not a deposit <laughs> no uh <laughs> got a little support on that by the way uh not much but a little i love like hypotheticals <laughs> yeah, how do they do a paternity test for a woman <laughs> it's like yeah how do they <laughs> um i think i didn't want to say do they have to Make her squirt. Oh, my God. God, God dude. Come on. Well, if you of figure... all the things, you know, that's like the one. There's like two words I can't stand. <laughs> Moist is one. Squirt is another. That is well, fucking you, disgusting. If you figure out how to do it, will you let me uh, know? This idiot. Uh, uh, it's pee, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, proved, I don't know. They proved it. It's urine. Oh. They okay. Was, there was like a the team crack. of scientists. <laughs> it's like the CSI. Sci- the, can- yeah. the cancer scientists took a break. Yeah, <laughs> and said, "Hey, let me go." We'll do half, test day, half days on Friday. So I, did, I was going to say though, I didn't want to say that when we were talking at, about it at a at, uh, at the Texan the, the Texan. public place, and that's probably my fault. Uh, that's my bad. I feel like that crowd would have loved that a lot more than I did. Mm. I'm upset that you reacted that way. Was it a was it a bus? This beer is Jake. This vibe? is the uh, badass Jake. No, I'm no, just I telling this you. This is the guy who's been called in to look at a girl doing that. <laughs> that was. <laughs> I mean, he invented the four pointer. <laughs> Didn't you have a friend once say, "Hey, I got this squirter. Come on in and look," and you did. Yeah, and it's the grossest thing I've ever. Like seen. he watched a buddy have sex with someone. Ooh. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I reacted that way. It's not awesome. <laughs> it's horrible. Oh man! Wow, good for you her. She kept so like she kept it going, even though you came in there. <laughs> it was way more than just me. <laughs> like a gallery. Wow, this guy with a guitar. <laughs> wow, that's so great. That's it's awesome. horrible, is what it is. Trust me. Doesn't sound like anybody here has seen it. No, it's horrible. I don't, I don't think I'd want to see it, but <laughs> just just trust me. Anyway, uh, back to Jerry back, Jones. <laughs> yeah, commenting on. The fact that he's been ordered to give a paternity test. Uh, I don't. Those uh, are, are uh, as it turns out, those are legal matters, and and uh, uh, I can't talk about them right now to some degree. But uh, uh, that'll work through, and I expect uh, much uh, perceived better uh, news in the future. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> perceived. That'll work through, and I 
expect much perceived better news in the future. That's actually news. what I wake up and say in the mirror every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I expect much better perceived news in the future. I don't even understand. All He's, right, let's let's talk football. Can now. I say this real quick? Is he trying to bank on the idea that he's never actually going to have to take this test? Or is he trying to bank on the idea that if he takes it, he will be proven, you are not the father. Number Morris one. Because there's no chance that he's that's He's never not going to kid. take this test. That's what we were saying last week, right? Like right. His what are they going just, to do? Like They're going to come Tell me hold the his steps. face down? and Yeah, the steps they would have to take are, okay, he keeps denying this court order. We're going to have to send cops... To actually take right. him what in you, and force subpoena? This. Are you telling me that's going to happen? No, I don't think so. But it's weird how he says it. He he frames it in a way of like, there's going to be good news in the future. When if the thing that you're saying, and I agree with, is actually what he's meaning, it's just, I can't comment on if that. If there's going to be good, he'd be like, oh, go ahead. okay, I'll take it. Exactly. I know it's not mine. Exactly. Or she. Probably not it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so now we're going to start talking football, and the guys are pretty happy about that. And they may have even framed this particular question as, you know, eh, people are sad, fans, they're, others are, are, Boy, are kind That's of, become so much more popular in the last couple of years. Not me, because I got a beer, I'm on the bus, it's great, but some are saying... What would you say about the perception of... It's very BBC. Right, but, but that, uh, here we go again. Like... Uh, we, we've what's seen, different? yeah, what, what's different about this year? Well, I will assure you there'll be some things done differently because we're going to be working on different players and drafting different people. <laughs> and so just the very nature of it is different. <laughs> different people or different, uh, we've got different coaches. Right. Right. Uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> didn't resolve. <laughs> he's he's letting you know they're not going to draft Mozzie again. <laughs> this year, they're going to draft different people, different players. That you'll be working on slash people or different people, or that's different from <laughs> players. Uh, coaches. Some of them are different. Some of them are different. Um, what year was last year? <laughs> what was the number of the year? Uh, 2023. 2023. What's this year? 2024. That's, is that's that the different. same? That is different. different. You're right. One, it's one later. Big, um, bigger opening even. day last year was September 10th. This year, September 12th. That's different uh, too. Like, uh, yeah, things are just, they're different. What would be different? Well, we're going to become the first team in NFL history not to bring back every single of the same player. <laughs> right. Most teams are doing that. <laughs> and create the a Cowboys time machine and play them the exact same schedule. I, 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 I'm almost surprised he didn't say, we're also going to play some different teams. That's right. Schedule way different. <laughs> and, like, when we face the Eagles, they're going to have some different players on they that. They will so also be have a different, different players. Yep, for sure. They'll be older. So I think, yes, he focused on the word different, and we played semantics. So now he actually goes from that. You heard him like, uh, um, uh. Mm -hmm. He kind of transitioned without really even being asked about going all in because that's the big bit. You've yeah, heard, I've heard quite a bit of that. Micah, I don't even know like where that started. Did it start with Micah? I Did think it, it start started with, with Jerry. Steven, Jerry, okay. Like that we're going all in this year. Yeah. I don't have much time. We're going all in. So now we have to define that, and that's uh, a fun part of this whole uh, bus experience. Uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the uh, we're getting there. the attention that our uh, the nuances of where we are with the cap, the nuances of where we are with our position in the draft. The nuances of where we are with our uh, free agents, that we get that involved in the definition of we're all in. <laughs> As you would look at every one of those aspects, and I probably left off for that many again, then we're going to be doing every solution or go working toward the solution being to win this year. Every solution. Dude, that may be my favorite. It sounds 
you know, we were joking around the other day about like doing some fun video stuff a la Prestige Worldwide. The phrase, we're going to be doing solutions, <laughs> is like the most <laughs> prestige worldwide phrase. We're going we're gonna to be, we're going to be doing solutions. The nuances of free agency and the draft need to be a part of the definition of all in. <laughs> Jeez. And everyone well, just sits there and nods. Yeah. <laughs> sits there. Their banquet Sink. beer. Every phrase. Or Miller. Which is exactly what you'd of. be doing of course. if you were there. No. <laughs> Bring me more sushi. Yeah. All right. Maybe you guys don't quite understand what he means. <laughs> Let's keep defining all in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won't put a lot of uh, things uh, and get value uh, when we can get more value now or get more value in the future. We'll be all in this year. And that. that could be in any area. That could be, it will be in any area, but uh, uh, it certainly uh, doesn't have to just be in free agency, or it doesn't have to just be in the draft. An aggressive approach to the draft, uh, trading up with a lot of picks, or trading down with a lot of picks. Uh, we, we will just uh, have in mind the team that's going on the field this year. <laughs> That's important. Have you, in mind the team. That's going on the field. Oh, the field, yeah. This year. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> not last year. Right. It's different. That's amazing, dude. Uh, there's more on All In. So you <laughs> could have a free agent that, and rather than have that free agent, uh, that free agent would cost you as much as three other players would cost you. Well, we're going to be all in with the three other players. But is that... That's all in. <laughs> no. That's my point. The definition of all in might be uh, uh, a trade like we didn't make or a sig- uh, we didn't sign a player last year uh, or two years ago that uh, we ended up with three players for. That's all in. What we're talking about now is what did I mean when we said all in? Okay. Your definition of what is all in and mine might not be the same thing. Yeah, they're but clearly I'm trying not. to win the games this year with my decision. So I'm all into this year. Is he referring to Randy Gregory? Yes. Yeah. Cuz that's when they As if that was his decision to not sign him and rather than Randy Gregory's agent. And we got three players instead of the one. Yeah, they were able to to bring back Dorrance, whoever else they signed. Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler, that's right. Is that just like when they they traded uh, Amari Cooper for nothing? <laughs> that was all in. That was all in. That was his definition of all in. It was, was it all in to not sign him? Yeah, and because all in to sign three more players too. That, that's you can define all in how you want. <laughs> that but, that basically what he's saying is no matter what they do, they're all it's in. It's all in. It's all in because if we decide the one free agent, like a breaking the bank on that. Although he did kind of make it sound like. We're not going to be breaking the bank on some free agent. Like, don't get excited about uh, so-and-so is a free agent and you think we're going to go after him or a trade. Like, if you think we're going to trade for uh, uh, Diggs, uh, Stefan Diggs or yeah. something like that, that, that's not going to happen. I think it's so weird, too, that, uh, you know, obviously he's he's been extremely successful in life. But then all these other people who are there, very smart people, all these scribes have to say things like, right. <laughs> well, you just you want to keep them talking. I know, but it just, when I can hear Todd Archer and David Moore and Clarence and Calvin in the background acting like anything that he's saying makes any goddamn sense at all. <laughs> yep, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. But right. when, when the Rams... And then they get off the bus and they're just like, what did he just say? I have to write an article was, about this I have to somehow. figure out... When the Rams traded for Stafford and they got Jalen Ramsey and they traded for this top end talent, yeah, that's they, all in. When they had yeah. no picks for like four years, but when you let a, or like when the Eagles went and got AJ Brown and yes. signed a couple DBs and took advantage of their rookie contract, yeah, but those things didn't work for those teams. No, uh, yeah, actually, all those teams they, were in the Super Bowl. Oh, or I mean, any number of teams leading to the definition of all in, right? Meaning you are mortgaging your future for this one year. <laughs> That's what it means. But now he's saying, 
I'm going to do it my way, and I call my way all in, even though I'm trying to be fiscally responsible and sign three other guys for less than this one guy. When it's the one guy that gets you to the effing Super Bowl. Probably one of those three guys that we sign won't even be active half the season. You know? Because they're a spare bit player. Okay, now they all didn't just sit and nod. There was a very good question regarding all in, and I don't know who asked this. You can give him credit. Afterwards, perhaps, but uh, I thought this was a great question regarding when he's saying all in. And I guess the, the question, how is that different in past years? Because you, you've always been trying to win games this year, theoretically. So who is that? Clarence. Yeah, Clarence. Clarence. Okay, so Clarence, how is... Clarence will go at Jerry from time to time. Yeah, they all will, really, but how is that different? You, uh, you've by, always... by the way, I wasn't like disrespecting them by saying they have to just sit no, there No, 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 I just I mean, like, they're smart people... And they have to listen to him talk. But, yeah, no, that's But great. I thought this is a great follow-up. I mean, you, every year you're trying to win. You, you're this year on the field. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've drafted quarterbacks for the future. Okay? Mm-hmm. I would uh, be reluctant to do that this year. Okay. That's an example, right? How does, uh, and use a top pick for uh, use our first pick for a quarterback this year for the future. Right. If you had an opportunity, there you are at twenty four. Greatest thing since ice creams. He's sitting there. <laughs> I'd be reluctant to do that this year. Let's call all the end of this year. Okay. Well, when is the last time they actually did draft a quarterback for the future? That's exactly what I wanted you to tell me. <laughs> because I mean, I don't feel like he's never. Since Troy Aikman. No, I mean, you've taken shots on Drew Henson and Chuch, and Stephen McGee was, what, the third round? Mm-hmm. But That's when they that, had nothing. They had nothing. They were dying. Lamar was there. Quincy was, like, third round. Quincy might have been second, second, but still. Was he? I could be wrong. Uh, but okay. I think we did this recently. Yeah, but still. I mean, <laughs> I don't feel like that's a departure in strategy or, uh, or approach at all. And also, does like anybody ever say the greatest thing since ice cream? <laughs> slice, <laughs> like slice ice bread. cream does rock. Yeah, you know, it does. It's, everyone likes it, but <laughs> all all in is not drafting a generational quarterback at twenty four. Yeah, especially when <laughs> yeah at twenty four, and when your quarterback is uh, due for a massive ex- <laughs> like this would be the time to do that. Yeah, and you can tell that people have been approaching him about it. Yeah, and he said, "No, not this year. We're all in. We're all in." <laughs> um, all right, this is all good stuff. Let me get to you. I'm just going chronologically. And I'm sorry to jump, yeah. but is all in probably letting your Hall of Fame left tackle go and then replacing him with your first round pick? Is that all in? Boy, we haven't even talked about that. You want to? Well, I can jump back because uh, he did give his thoughts on Tyron Smith. It's 10 seconds long. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> We'll get in there in the right way and uh, uh, discuss his business and uh, work out something that's uh, good for both of us. Okay. So Jerry, always the optimist. He t- So this weekend, yes, that did drop from who? Schefter, somebody, one of the... Yeah. One of the breaking news guys said that... Um, Boy, do you have the tweet? Just because um, the way it was worded to me was very much, this was given to me by Tyron Smith's agent. Yeah, I mean, at least I have the article pulled up. The Todd Archer ESPN article, Tyron Smith is unlikely to play a 14th season with the Dallas Cowboys after initial discussions left the sides at different ends of the salary spectrum, according to a source who confirmed multiple reports. And that came down Saturday Jerry, with the optimism, was Friday, right? Wasn't this bus thing Friday when we were Yes, that's right. Yeah. Blake was upset that Jerry took this out of the trash. Yeah. Yeah. Knew what he's doing. Yeah. (laughs) But I don't – it doesn't sound to me like there's a whole lot of hope. Which, look, I mean – But they're negotiating in the press. He is here. Of course. We're going to get together and make some makes we have we have to come up with something that makes sense for both sides. And then Tyron's people. Have you ever heard something like that before? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Tyron's people go to Todd Archer or Schefter and, and say what, we're not even close. Yeah, what makes sense to to Tyron is 
I took a team friendly deal. And My first deal, I took a team friendly cut last year. I've I've done everything for this team. Also, it should be said because I was extremely uh, pessimistic about this. He was awesome last year. Like he played most of the season and was as good as he's been in four or five years. So that can go at a moment's notice. He could immediately go back to playing six games a year, <laughs> but he was awesome. So they're in a really tough spot of having to try to... I mean, obviously, they'll just kick Tyler Smith out, but now you need another guard. Now you're not really sure what you want to do with Terrence Steele. Well, I've, so you think they just move uh, Tyler Smith over to tackle? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's what he, I mean, it's what he is. Okay, but he's played so well He's played at guard. very well at guard, too. Yeah, but either way, you have... You have, you have some a real huge problems and not a lot of picks to do it and not a lot of money to do it. Well, and Biotis is a free agent, too. What did Jerry call him? <laughs> no, Stephen called him Baidez. Baidez, <laughs> that's right. Baidez. Look at the – phonetically, <laughs> if you've <laughs> never you are, heard anyone yeah. say his name, you, are you correct. might say so that. Stephen's never heard his name be said. You are correct. <laughs> There's a very good chance that he hasn't. Um, all right. Actually, I have – Baidez. His thoughts on different players, but let me just keep going back to uh, – let's back up a little bit. So he's all in. This year is different, and uh, he's energized. He feels good, but he's also upset because of, you know, losing to Green Bay and losing in the first round every year. Uh, I'm both. <laughs> I'm both. I'm, uh, uh, but uh, uh, that's no problem. Uh, I've got uh, I've had a life of uh, having some stuff that was so bad that I just stuck my head in the hole in the sand and like an ostrich uh, and went over to something that was going better. It's a good thing about having several things going. But then I'll get back around to it. I don't leave anything just uh, enough to create a gap. So I've uh, frankly lived a life where I had some bad things going a lot and had some good things going at the same time. I don't want to get philosophical here, but that's what we've got here okay. with this team and with the way I look at this team. That's amazing. So that's a positive, actually. When you say, "Well, I'd like my general manager just focusing on the team." Yeah, not Manny Pacquiao or. But Pepsi he's saying it's better because when things com. are going bad with negotiations with Dak or whatever, I'll just go book a fight. Yeah, and then I'll feel better. I'll go to the X Games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go do a crypto deal. That you know, there is there is some life. He like he said, he's getting philosophical there, where he's just like, yeah, I just ignore whenever people are like serving me paternity suits. I'm just, I just like, put my head in the I sand. Go look at the draft. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know I'll get back to it. Yeah, eventually, eventually maybe. <laughs> he doesn't leave a gap. No, no <laughs> gap. He's an ostrich. I mean, that's always been my thought on why, you know, doing sports talk in Dallas is so fun because if one team sucks or is out of the new you know we we could just go over to this other one we'll ignore the mavs now and we'll just go uh jump on the stars bandwagon and talk about that all the time or whatever yeah but that's you know that's what we do i feel like that's way different than what he does okay uh football prop so he was asked point blank like okay this team has problems that need to be fixed that's what he's going to address here problems Football problems, not subjective. Uh, well, of the kinds of things you'd look at, we need some uh, uh, better help in a run game, period, both sides. The things you guys have been pointing to, need some help in that run game. We uh, 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 certainly need uh, uh, to uh, 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 really be more disciplined relative to penalties. Uh, at critical times, untimely penalties. <laughs> so basically that's it. The don't, run game penalties. Don't do so many penalties. Right. And then, okay. They are, it is really weird, right? Like I, I feel like at one point I went through and did like a 20-year look at all the teams that McCarthy had been a, the head coach of. Maybe it was 15 years. His Green Bay teams, you know, there would be up years, there would be down years, penalty-wise, but 
the McCarthy Cowboys are just wildly highly penalized. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Are they among the league leaders? I think, yeah, I just, I just looked this one up. Third last year. Um, and it's been something like top five every year he's been here. And, you know, it's the old adage of coaches saying we don't coach penalties. So is it a style of play thing? Is it just like the type of guys you have? Some of them are penalized more than others because they don't have, you know, the mental focus or something. But it is really weird. The league has it out for us. That's right, That's computer. What they always say up in post game. I think that, I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't help. Yeah. The argument. You gotta play the other team and the refs. It's the cowboy way. We've heard that half a dozen times in the last three years. It's almost like it has more to do with culture. culture. Yeah. Well, we'll get to culture in a second, but that's that's. Yeah, part of that I think is always blaming the refs and all that. That just feeds it, you know. But I, w- I should also say... Instead of kind of blame yourself a little bit. There have been really good teams who were penalized a lot. Like, let's see, San Francisco was fifth last okay. year. It does happen. It's just that for whatever reason, under McCarthy with Dallas, it's happened every year. Well, and like Jerry even pointed out, like, at crucial times. Yeah, mm-hmm. which that's like a very small sample size, so... Yeah, it's hard to say that. Um, I also do, real quick, because uh-huh. I can't get enough of this, I love how uh, he knows, like, he acknowledges, yeah, we need to get better at the stuff you guys have pointed out. Right. I mean, you guys. You guys know. I mean, yeah, I see. I read what you write. You're, I know exactly. You, you guys are just right. You basically. guys could run this team. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's implicit in what he's saying. So he's still talking about trying to get better, and then I think he's going to uh, mess up another cliche. Uh, so uh, it's, it's uh, not an unattainable situation to have the – deep disappointment and frustration that our fans and I have and we all have about how we ended but to also be not foolish about what we've got as a team and not throw that out with the dish with bath water <laughs> and build off of that and that's what we're doing yeah so don't tear it down don't that's if I'm translating right don't don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Trade everything just because you're 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 kind of bitter here. Yeah, um, and far be it for me to criticize somebody for the way that they're speaking. After last week, again, I completely botched how a paternity test works. But I thought when I first heard that audio this morning that the headline was going to be that he confused unattainable and untenable. Yeah, I said unintenable. That's a weird one. At the very beginning, if you want to hear it again, he... He, he, he meant to say untenable. He meant to say untenable. He might have meant to say unattainable. That's true. Uh, so, uh, it's it's uh, not an unattainable situation. <laughs> that is not... That is, unattainable. That is not a word. He combined two words. <laughs> yeah. And then he kept going, and he's like, don't throw it out with the dishwater. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. So, you mentioned culture. That's another thing that's been in the news headlines. Uh, so, we've heard all in... We've heard, uh, well, maybe there's a culture problem. Weren't we talking about this? Maybe even with Demarcus Lawrence saying they're tired, then Micah Parsons is on there saying, I would never say that. Or, you know, there's just, everybody seems to have stuff going on. And I don't know. Here's culture to me is somewhat like goodwill, (laughs) right? (laughs) And it is to Jerry as well. What is culture? (laughs) <laughs> I'm asking I really won't hear your definition of what culture is I, I, I really uh, 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 can't say uh, I uh, when I look at our team we need to be able to stop the run better and we need to be able to run the ball better if that's culture then we got a problem But I'm, you I'm don't not. Feel a sense of I'm not. Or anything I, like that. With, uh, uh, no. Okay. No. With players. Yes, with players. Tell me. Yeah. No. No. Not at all. Our, our players that, uh, uh, and many deserve to have, feel good about themselves, and feel good about the plays that, uh, that they, uh, what they have contributed to the team. But those happen to be the very same players that get down on themselves more than anybody when they don't play well. That is not a problem on this team at all. We don't have anybody pointing it over there at somebody else. They're pointing it at their own mirror. 
pointing at their own mirror. Yeah, no one's blaming. No one's pointing fingers. Um, all right, you know what I want to do? Take a break, but then I want to get to... Not like you have to tease. You could fast forward two minutes here, but it's, uh, you know... Just because he does talk individual players. He did mention Tyron, uh, but, you know... Little Dak. The Dak extension, that's a big deal. The dumbs up, dumbs up. Well, you know, Dan... Uh, I hate any time anybody is killed or anybody dies. Uh, but he was a guy that was living to be dead, so to speak. Uh, you know, they told him, don't under any circumstances leave school early. You just you just don't have the work habits. You don't have this. You don't have that. What did he do? Left school early. Uh, I always can remember this. Uh, we invited players to the draft. And he was one of the players we invited to the draft, and uh, he, we were told, "No, uh, uh, we're uh, we're going to have our own party." His own party was uh, a party at the bowling alley, charged him fifty bucks to get into the bowling alley uh, for his party. Uh, it was always something, you know. It, it's it's one of those things. Uh, I'm never offside, but they keep calling me for offside. Is what it is. So. You know, it's a tragic thing. Anytime anybody dies, it's tragic. Uh, and especially when you're 24 years old and you got to hold your whole life ahead of you. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe if he'd have stayed in school a year, uh, he wouldn't do silly things. I mean, I don't, when you're jogging on a highway, uh, you know, on a road like that, that leaves it open because I tell you, it's so. Uh, guy has two drinks and he's just a little bit to. To the right side of the road, uh, and, and gets hit and killed. It's easy to happen. Yeah. You're listening to the Dumb Zone. I like this new bit of making us songs. Is it here? The great Jameson? The great Jameson. You still have to play the drop, or is it sort of implied because it was the central... Well, at the end of... Um, were you there still? Yeah, when you let the crowd down. <laughs> we're at, at the show, the road show we did on Thursday in Athens. At the end of it, somebody said, I never got to hear the No Puppet drop. Like They were... They said, so that's why I came out here. the only reason I came out here, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> no puppet. Yeah! All right, back to Jerry. Can't so Jerry Jones scored earlier. <laughs> What's your deal with moist? Come on, nobody likes moist, right? Isn't that like a common? <laughs> yeah, but nobody had the reaction that you did for Squirt. <laughs> like start yelling and crying again, like a little. It's like, for me, hearing that word is like a, a veteran going in and seeing the opening scene from Saving Private So it's Ryan. because you've seen it? <laughs> yeah. Live? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, little, little squirt People guns are fine. People leave the theater crying. There's a nice of, soda <laughs> called squirt. With your, oh, yeah. Who doesn't oh, yeah, enjoy a nice World War lemon II lime. rope yeah. hat on? <laughs> You're just like a soldier, you know? Exactly. Is this girl hot? <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> he respects her. That's right. Enough to <clears throat> listen to somebody play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to know if Jerry's going to extend Dak? Do tell. I can't uh, wait. We don't need to, uh, <laughs> but we can mm -hmm. uh, if uh, uh, everybody. So what we're doing here, just to let you in ahead, we are now negotiating the contract. Using the media. Sure. Just kind of the same way that Tyron's people 
did that as well. It's it's not out of the question that Tyron is a Cowboy this year. Yeah, you're more confident about that than I am, but you've also been right a lot. So the fact that they planted that was a negotiating ploy. Like, hey, we're very far away. We told you that behind closed doors. Now we've made an announcement publicly. So the point is you better move on that number or Tyron. In fact, if you read the tweet, I don't even know if you have the the Tyron Smith tweet was, um, gosh, it was just the way it was worded. Did you ever find that, Blake? No. It wasn't I mean, Schefter. Oh. Gosh darn it, I'll find it. Was it Gelkin? No, the it was, it was one of the uh, the guys, the big guys. I don't consider Gelkin the big guy. One of the big guys passed this weekend. Dude, that hurt. Martin. Who? Yeah, the Mort Report. The Mort Report. That's tough, yeah. Are you a big Mort guy? Here, talk about Mort while I look for this tweet. Um, Is it the Todd Archer one? Tyron Smith unlikely to play 14th season for Cowboys. Door might not be entirely slammed on a return, uh, pending how the free agent market shakes out. I don't know. I'm looking at Jenna Ryan's tweet. Her and her boyfriend got a matching tattoo. I saw that. It was a tough day for me. Uh, that's not the one I was looking for. That one hurt. More than more. But, uh, Just all this bad news this weekend. I know. so much. But you won that game. Both of them. Isn't that what's really important? I'll find it. Uh, let me just play you. Uh, we're we're going to negotiate Dak's contract right now by telling you guys. Uh, we don't need to, uh, but we can uh, if uh, uh, everybody wants to uh, uh, solve it. You can. And so uh, uh, how is you get in and uh, get on the same page and see if you can uh, come to an agreement. If you can't, what we have in place works. And so obviously, uh, if you do it one way, then that gives you, a, you'll be working through some of the other areas on the team in a different way. Uh, but you can't really plan on that until you uh, see where you are there. That's what we're doing. Okay, so this is the key part. And so obviously, uh, if you do it one way, then that gives you, a, you'll be working through some of the other areas on the team in a different way. All right, you know how we did lose that Hall of Fame left tackle. I mean, if you want all the money. That's fine. Then but. it's probably a late round pick or just like, you know, minimum guy protecting your blind side. That's that. We could do that. I'm not making that choice, really. Right now, the choice is yours. If you want you the best will make team the around choice. you. Yeah. We're going to do it a different way. But the pie is only so big. Now, he didn't say that, but that is exactly what we've heard every year, and that's what he means here. Sure. That you're making – you are now making the choice. on Because you can get all the money. I mean, come on. But uh, you want lesser talent around you? That's that's not my call. It's now in your court. Because the other thing he's also doing is <clears throat> there have been some, you know, quote, reports that Dak might not even want to restructure right now. Why is that? Because if he plays for another year at the level that he did last year, his number is only going to go up. Mm. So, you know, if he restructures right now, obviously there's part of it, which is what you're saying, which is that, you know, he's going to get a huge number, but they can lower the cap hit on the front end of it, which I think the Cowboys probably actually want him to do. Whereas, like, Dax people might say, no, the price of the brick only goes up every day, and... If we come out here and play at an MVP level again next year <laughs> and I'm completely free, like he doesn't have to do it. The difference would the, the only difference would be how much money are you getting guaranteed to you right now. But like if he's fairly confident in himself, he's like, no. I'll carry a sixty million dollar cap hit next year. I'll go out and be a top five to seven quarterback next year. What are you gonna pay me after that? Is this the last year of his deal? Yes. Right? Okay. Well, yes and no. I think yes, but also he has like these like voidable dummy years. 
that are kind of confusing. Like there would still be dead money if yeah he left after this year. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. I. Yeah. This is all. It feels like it's all a game, and that they will extend him. Sure. Probably at camp. But uh, I don't know. It certainly J- Jerry likes being in the news every day. But can you wait till camp if you have to sign free agents and draft picks? Like Jerry kind of intimated that there. Like we can't decide all that other stuff till we get this decided. Whereas remember last time he was up, it was well they ended up getting Zeke done. They ended up getting. Uh, Who's our sunglasses? Jalen Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they did a lot of things uh, ahead of Dak, and then it ended up costing them even more on Dak. I don't know. Well, I guess at that time they still had the franchise tag they could do. And of course, Dak's people are very smart and did not allow that for this. If we move to Tyron Smith, I did find the Ian Rappaport tweet that I thought was really – Okay, tell me how you know this was written by an agent. <laughs> tell me this was written by an agent without telling me this was written by an agent. Okay, there you go. End of an era. Cowboys All-Pro and Pro Bowl left tackle Tyron Smith will be a free agent and is unlikely to return to Dallas, sources say. The blind side protector since 2011. <laughs> okay. Well. Smith will be highly coveted. <laughs> I feel like the, the last sentence was entirely written by <laughs> CAA or whoever. Really, the Cowboys didn't write that? Like, oh my gosh, he's... <laughs> what if the Cowboys did? He will be highly, highly coveted. coveted. The awfully injured left tackle. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Who his wants play, too much his, money. <laughs> appeared in less than 50% of the games in the Mike McCarthy era. Which is all true, right? Those yeah. things. So yeah, now we're playing games. Um, also, we're let's send this message to Michael Gallup's people. If Michael Gallup was concerned, are we going to be cut here? Shut up, Blake. Don't have a decision that we would like to uh, talk about right now. Uh, It's one that we'll be going over with him. But uh, nothing that we would say independent of uh, without him being involved. We need to sit down and go over stuff with him before we talk about what we're going to do or not do. I mean, we're not going to necessarily release you. But at this number, we're not paying it. So we're going to talk about this. And again, you can make the decision here. You can take the pay cut. And here's what the pay cut is. Or, you know, you can go ahead and test that market. Man. Because I've seen other stuff about Michael Gallup's market going to be good. It's going to be strong. Why? Well, that's put out by Michael Gallup's people. And you get these idiots like Rappaport. This is... uh, this is a really – this will be fun to uh, – we have a guest on Friday. I think it will be fun to talk about this stuff with him. Can we promote? We have Ethan Strauss as a guest lined up. Like he'll – just this whole new – this world of media that these guys have become huge, big money superstars just to be mouthpieces for both sides. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. You're not. They're not really breaking any news. Yeah, I would just say this real quick, though. I don't know that they uh, that they can just move on from Gallup. I mean, they they just signed him a couple of years ago. I mean, do you want to carry a? Would you rather just have Michael Gallup out there as your third or fourth wide receiver at that number, or would you rather have to pay five million dollars for nothing? What's his number? It's just, I don't know. 13 or 14, but did you see the uh, – do you see what receivers are getting now? <laughs> like, didn't Well, he... like Justin Jefferson's going to get $30 million, but – Okay, well, a third wide receiver making $14 million a year is not like the craziest thing in the world. No, but if they like Jalen Tolbert or <laughs> they better. whoever. But his production, though, was not that of a third wide receiver, was it? No, but maybe he was – Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he was still hurt. Who knows? I think I would take the dead money. But I mean, yeah, that's really the the question is: Would you rather just carry five to six million dollars of dead money to just have him gone? And maybe you would, but you're also about to have to pay your uh, wide receiver one thirty million dollars a year because he's not going to take less than uh, Aquamania St. Brown just got. 
Aquaminius, you What's mean? His name? How, did, how did, I, did I say that wrong? No, you're talking. Amon Ra. Amon Ra. Amon Ra. Amon Ra. Yeah, yeah, not his brother. I would the love other CD to take Aquaminius's uh, yeah. number. <laughs> He's a Bears wide receiver, right? Isn't it like 27 million? Did he? I'm pretty sure. Well, I know the report came out today that yeah, CD wants what four for 120. Yeah. And the report from CD probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, after the year he had, probably worth it. Yeah, let's see. The rumor is $28 million for Amon Ross St. Brown. <sighs> I got like three minutes more of audio. Do we want it? Yeah, I guess so. Let's do it. Because he did talk in circles about Trey Lance a little bit. Uh, Arrow is really up. <laughs> uh, he's ever bit the. Uh, he's he's uh, exceeded expectations as a person, as a worker. Uh, as a character, he's got unique skills. All right, you know what? Let me just fast forward 40 <laughs> seconds. So we didn't get to see that. What we do know, though, is what he's done at practice and what he's been. You say he didn't um, get to see him in games. Be real clear. We don't know about his game experience, his competitive experience, but we do know about his practicing and things he's done there, all plus. Okay, so, blah, blah, blah. He did say something in there that I – the one thing I didn't end up playing but I thought was kind of interesting. He said that's why we picked up his contract this year. Did they Did they do the fifth-year option? No, they have another year for that. Yeah, it's just the – keeping him for next – like they're, they roster bonused him. So they his, could have just cut him. Correct. And not owed him anything. Yeah, they did not pick up his – Twenty two point five or whatever oh, okay. it is for next, but he is. So they picked up four million or whatever, something five? like that, four or five. Yeah. Okay, which is, which not, is not nothing. nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially if you ha- already have Cooper Rush and you feel like he's a fine. Cooper Rush may be in trouble. I would hope he is. Yeah, I know. I mean, if I, you've invested this into Trey Lance, guaranteed. Now the problem is, you don't know. Then what are you going to do? The twenty two million thing. Uh, you're never going to do that with Trey Lance. No. Well, if Dak walks. <laughs> but don't you have to declare that $22 million this year, or do you, can yeah, you do it at the beginning of next year? Yeah, but then Dak will be free. You can do. I think you can do it at the beginning of next year. Okay. I think. Could be wrong about that, but... How crazy would that be? If Dak walks and then you throw Trey Lance out there. Finally get your first-round quarterback, Blake. Not in the way that I wanted it. <laughs> Third <yeah>. overall pick? <laughs> yeah. Sure. But just not paying your... Somewhat above average quarterback, sixty-five or seventy million dollars seems. But if he sweet. actually turned out to be good, it would be a brilliant move. That we yeah, got him for a fourth rounder. Except for the problem that uh, he would immediately need a new contract. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it wouldn't be sixty million. It wouldn't be sixty, but probably be thirty, right? Yeah. All right, and then I'll end with this. It's a two-minute clip. <laughs> But they're asking him about Mike Zimmer. Okay. And what Mike Zimmer brings to the team and all that. Yeah, accountability. And he's Mike Zimmer. You know, he's all Mike Zimmery. Hot girlfriend. Ex girlfriend. Where's an eye patch? And uh, I'll never forget. I may have told you guys, but I had a coach. And uh, he was beloved. He was certainly, I thought a lot of it. And uh, we stunk it up, and I did. And uh, against Mississippi and uh, Ole Miss and Little Rock. We came home and we were at Fayetteville in a team meeting. And Stephen was about uh, a year old. And so this coach rakes me over the coals in the meeting in front of the whole team, a bunch. Meeting's over, I go out in the hall and he comes out and said, Jerry, how's Stephen? I said, what, coach? He said, how's Stephen? I said, Stephen, how dare, how could you even ask me about Stephen? Uh, you've made me just crawl out of the desk in there. I don't, I've never felt anything like that. Don't you ask me. You don't give a shit about Stephen. You give a shit about me. Well, boy, he goes, oh, Jerry, 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 you're missing it. You're missing it, son. He said, uh, I know more important to you than anything in the world is be a football player. I know that. And I'm trying to help you be that. And that's my way of trying to make you better. I love you, and I do love Stephen. 
And of course, the guy later on, when I got in business, I went in business with him. Same guy. What kind of business? Uh, it was insurance. Insurance. So he was a, a beloved coach, and he actually uh, had a little something to touch Stephen when Stephen went back to school up there at the time. But bottom line is Zimmer. That's the way Zimmer might do it. I could <laughs> Adam Jones talking to Zimmer. Or Dion talking to Zimmer. Oh. Got that kind of stuff. Man, did you forget he was asked about Mike Zimmer? I kind of did, yeah. For, <laughs> I got lost for a second. This guy touched Steven. Steven's, I don't know, touched by... Is touched mean you're mentally disabled? <laughs> Does it? Yeah, right? Like, like he's touched? Yeah. Yeah. Like or, an old or, 40s term? You know, a pederast. Okay, then he later, <laughs> he later touched Steven. But yeah. you know, I mean, it's part of the game. <laughs> His name was Jerry Sandusky. I think it's a really, <laughs> a really funny follow-up from. I couldn't tell if it was Todd or Machota. The what kind of business? Yeah, I thought it was like a call your bluff. Yeah, like yeah, like you did not. Like, what was insurance it? is the most generic stuff. Answer. Yeah, uh, insurance. <laughs> that's great, and yeah, that's what I love about Coach Zimmer. <laughs> <laughs> What if it's questioning him? By the way, I guess I didn't realize that uh, Jerry had Steven whenever he was still on the team. Yeah, it threw me. Yeah, His college parent. I thought about. Well, I thought during the thing is we should research that. Is that that's probably true? I mean, he was definitely was married. He married in college. Yeah. yeah, I remember hearing that. I've been thinking so much about a different time Steven yeah. and Alex Davis being <laughs> brother and sister. Like after we talked about it last <laughs> week, like all weekend, I was just like. How do they like shake hands? Do they? Someone said they could get us her number. Do you Brothers want to play? Hug. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Well, you just don't like booking guests, so. Oh. Yeah, we can have her on the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> have her in the den. Even better. Now we're talking. <laughs> okay, we ready to move on? Sure. That's a lot of cowboys. Here's Jay. I hope we're moving on to this. Dumb so. So, I don't know if you guys kept up with this over the weekend, Dan, but uh, the situation in the Texas panhandle, which you're very familiar with because, oh, it's like the handle of a pan. (laughs) Upper left. It's on fire. Oh. Very much on fire. Uh, Like it's doing great? (laughs) No, not like from an economic development standpoint. Uh, Firefighters working to stop the largest uh, wildfire in state history. This is a big one. They've had to evacuate several towns, a few more over the weekend. Um, I, I always find this to be a bit interesting, just kind of from the makers of here's the economic uh, impact of the Olympics or the Super Bowl. When they quote you the percentage that the fire is contained, it, okay. feels, it feels like a very rough guess to me. What are they saying? Well, that's the other thing that's weird about it is that they differentiate even in one area like that there are three different fires. So they say as of Sunday afternoon, the Smokehouse Creek fire was 15% contain, uh, contained, but the other two fires were 60% contained. Mm. And it just feels like you're kind of like... 60%, not 50, not yeah, 65. <laughs> right. Just a, a really, really rough guess. And it, it just means how much of it is not moving, right? I think so. They're not spreading, I guess would be the better verb. So, the, yeah, they're just looking at the fire. Ah, this half, a little more than half is still moving. Yeah. <laughs> 1,900 square miles. But then, didn't they get snow? Oh, I didn't know about that. During they, the fire? They Yeah, they had fires in the panhandle, and then that... Uh, the rain that we got last week was snow in the panhandle, and I think that actually helped contain the fires a little. Hmm. You, think? I mean, you would think? Yeah. A little climate change coming through for us. Yeah. <laughs> Is the panhandle that shape because of slavery? <laughs> what? Do we uh, need our historian? I think that's the Oklahoma panhandle. Um, no, you're you're pretty much right. Oh. Like that, the well, yes, it is the Oklahoma Panhandle, but like the way that that thing juts over, like that, the Oklahoma Panhandle part at the top of Texas, that is a hundred percent a 
parallel related to slavery. Because we needed slavery. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're both right, sort of. Hey, look at us. Yeah. Educational. Thanks, Jake. (laughs) Thanks for making us feel better. It's funny, too, like when... The conversation that we just had about, like, would snow help put out a fire? <laughs> <laughs> preceded seems that. like it would. Yeah. <laughs> These are like the exact... It's like water, right? Do you remember when your kids were Made young? Like, that's the exact sort of conversations you, you would have. You know, like, she'll ask me, like, uh, <laughs> how come rain doesn't put out the sun? And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a great one. She's like, well, because if you put water on fire or something hot, doesn't it go away? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, how come whenever it rains, the sun doesn't go out? Because I think a couple weeks ago, it was like raining when it was somewhat sunny outside. <laughs> well, the sun is out there. Yeah, I know, but I can't <laughs> explain that to her. Well, it's not raining on the sun. But she looks up and sees yeah. rain coming from sky and sun up there. And she's just like, this makes no sense. She's like, I, wouldn't rain put the fire out? <laughs> I feel like your daughter is very logical. She asked a lot of questions like that where I'm just like, Oh man, I, mean, I really don't she know. She would logically understand that the sun is above the clouds. Yeah, I mean, I worked through it, especially if you just kind of give her a rap on the back of her head. Yeah, <laughs> that's Kick. how you get them to pay attention. Uh, speaking of the sun, some Texas schools are canceling classes for the solar eclipse. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm fired up about this eclipse, guys. I know. I can tell. You got your your specs. Uh, I was going to reveal on the oh, video show tomorrow, oh, no. but somebody, <laughs> so I had something in my Amazon cart, but I had not hit go yet. And then I got an Amazon package this weekend. And in it was this. It is wow. a four pack of you know, glasses that you can view the eclipse and then I went to my phone. I'm like, I, did I hit go on that? And I have not. So some wow, nice patron, some listener. Uh, this is AAS approved. <laughs> and it says in parentheses, AAS is a NASA partner. <laughs> so this is like space, oh. space approved. And look, there's like a picture of Saturn on the front. and You're not going to wear it? There's an astronaut. No. You can do the Trump. I'll be inside. I'll be preparing the news. You're going to be outside. We're going to be live streaming outside yeah. somewhere. <sighs> yeah. And for four, <laughs> three minutes or whatever, you're going to be like, oh, my God. I can't wait because I'm I'm really enjoying that you are poo-pooing this because I think you're going to be like, wow, dude, you're right. That was awesome. <laughs> it gets very dark. It's going to be wild. I'm I'm pro solar eclipse. Would you rather watch the eclipse or watch a girl squirt again? <laughs> Dude. Probably the eclipse, <laughs> to be honest with you. Any I wish I w- sync that up? I wish I would have had the glasses for that. <laughs> this, that'd be a great uh, thing to, to invent. Squirt glasses. So you don't really see the whole thing. And it's kind of like you could also use this for a... Here's Dan for squirt glasses. What was I watching? Uh, a movie? Maybe it was Leave the World Behind. A movie? Like a? They don't call those movies, bud. <laughs> no, <laughs> but like a movie. No, uh, you ever watch a movie and there's like somebody uh, putting a needle in? And yeah. for me, I gotta kind of put my hand up it's a little bit. The pimple mm-hmm. popper videos. Yeah, like I can see. I'll see some of it, like through <laughs> my fingers, but I don't want to see it all. Or somebody cutting into flesh, and you know, you're like, well, no, that's that's clearly it's an it's an it's fake. Nah, I don't care, though. I can't watch it. Like, same bit. So these glasses, you would be able to wear them for, for gory scenes or for squirting <laughs> scenes. This is a good idea that Jake just came uh. up with. Uh, and as expected. And now, look at how he doesn't... He's so distanced. But he doesn't back off when we say the word squirt anymore. He's I know. like, ah. Like, I ah. think you've come a long way. Just Thank you. I appreciate you recognizing that. You're uh Desensitizing them. The uh, the reports are coming out from Airbnb, and they're exactly what you would expect. What? Where uh, the pattern in Texas is up about a thousand percent. Are we surge pricing? 
hundred percent gouging. I, I really want to rent out my house. I know it's probably too late. Ah, eh, it's probably not too late actually. If there's heavy demand, somebody will probably try to scoop in last minute. Boy, can you get your edition built real quick? And- <laughs> no, oh. <laughs> I don't think so. One, I could just leave. One month is your vacation. Uh, your lake home already sold? I forgot to look that up over the weekend. My guess is yes. Somebody got a deal. Probably so. Uh, They'll yeah. be right out there at that table. <laughs> no hey, one can see. Then, then your hypothetical could come true. Both at the same time. That's right. <laughs> Boy. That is what you do at that table. Uh, yeah, they, a 1,000% increase in searches for properties in the path of totality. So, dun dun dun! So ominous. We're in that, right? Yes. I think Ohio is too. I was talking. You have to go to Ohio. Though. I was talking to my buddy Sven over the weekend. You know Sven. Have you met Sven? Only through uh, hearing about him. Unless he was there the night that I said Joe Thomas wasn't a Hall of Famer, and I don't believe he was. No, he's like six 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 eight. I would have remembered that. Yeah. Let's go 6-6. Six, six. Uh, the eclipse has also spurred an increase in nightly hotel rates in Texas as they're cleaning up as well. It's not just Airbnb. I hope there's a, some sort of like little cottage industry a la like Roswell, New Mexico. With the aliens? Yeah, where people are able to, for four or five days, just sell what other dumb stuff they can fleece to tourists. Like, Bucky's is going to clean mm. up. Dude, this is a good idea for our our live stream. We could sell t-shirts. D- I promise you that there will be people selling t-shirts on the street. Like in uh, Victory Plaza and stuff like that. But it'll be like the Dumb Zone logo, but it'll be like mostly covered. In- <laughs> <laughs> Funny. That's good. I survived the 2024 eclipse. So where are we going to do this from? I know we talked about like, hey, we're definitely going to be live streaming during this but is it going to be here we could just do it here outside because that you know would mean we're not fighting crowds because you got to think if there's any real good places to do it or would some building let us do it atop their building that'd be pretty sweet that'd be pretty sweet i bet you i bet you there's going to be like some downsides to this like crime seems like a good time to do some looting to me in the cloak of the the night yeah and everybody's like out looking at it and not paying attention it's only gonna be like two three minutes (laughs) yeah but everybody's gonna be like building up to it beforehand so while everybody's standing there staring in the sky i'll rob a liquor store isn't that what the prestige told us what's that like the magician <clears throat> just, movie? Yeah. Get, the their, or get everyone's eyes looking one way, and that's yeah. when you can pull off a magic trick. Yeah. It's a good movie. I'm predicting crime. There's your news. The Dumb Zone <laughs> News. Like and subscribe. I'm predicting the opposite. You're predicting no like crime. Giving. harmony and yes, unity, giving. peace yeah. and harmony. In fact, this will bring us all together. Ends homelessness. The left, right, you know, Trump, Biden, whatever you believe in, you will be united. But although, do you think the border will just like people will be pouring through for that three minutes? I would be. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the, the last thing I'll say is I just cannot wait to see how Sports Mayor makes this about him. Wow. <laughs> Somehow, some way. Just trust me. Yeah. Somehow, some way. The Dumb Zone presents Today in History. I think we have plenty of time for this. Well, and then we got business really. meeting. I mean, just, you know what I mean. By the way, Sports Mayor was on Ted Cruz's podcast, which exists, apparently. Did you listen? Not yet. Are you going to? I might I feel like, yeah, cut some of that up. I well, he's it. <laughs> he's not just like, hey, I I think I'm more for uh, lesser government. Like he's like leaning into it hard. He's yeah. hanging out with Dan Patrick he's and yeah. going full full repub. Pauly and McLovin. I think it's a different Dan Pat, but it, maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> it would know, be kind of cool if the Texas <laughs> if the Texas Dan Patrick had 
like his assistant. His he called, dance. <laughs> they called him McLovin. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. I've never watched the Dan Patrick show. Well, I used to board op it. Oh, you did? Well, I mean, we ran it at night, you know? We did. It's not bad for generic. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, so when I did, uh, I guess it was the top 10, and I would work until either 10 or 11. We would run two hours of that every night. I didn't hate it, honestly. It was a very collaborative vibe to it. McLovin has his own show now. He does. I think several of them have moved CBS on. CBS or something. Yeah. Did Dan Patrick ever have Keith Olbermann on? Uh, I'm sure he did. Okay. You know, reminisce. But not to I, your... When you were on the board? I was just a big fan of those guys. I know you hate Olbermann now. I do hate Olbermann now, but back then, um, I at least loved Dan Patrick. But I also love Stuart Scott, which I think you've always been... <laughs> pretty anti stew pot. <laughs> yeah. Is it that you don't like him or that you don't like what he created? Yeah, you don't like the spinoffs. Because all that audio that I've brought to you from ESPN Saturday morning is all Stuart Scott. Yeah. Where they're like, all right, let's head over to the Chell. <laughs> see what the, <laughs> the pens did against the... Yeah, and I guess it's all just evolution, right? Uh-huh. We started with Chris Berman and yeah. I can't just do Chris Berman. I have to bring it up a notch and and then we end up with Joey Zanaboni. You know who I really loved was, uh, what's his name, Charlie uh, Steiner. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah, I love him. He ended up being the Dodgers uh, voice on radio. Did you know that? I did not, but that's a great note. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> Today is Monday, March 4th. On this day in 1998, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that sexual harassment at work. Cut it out can be illegal even when the offender and victim are of the same gender. Mm. Remarkable that it took until 1998 for the idea that your boss credit carding you in the hallway. (laughs) So in 1997, he's like, hey, if you were a gay guy, you're just touching it up. (laughs) However much you want. (laughs) Take it to the court, chief. But, yeah, I guess this is good because... You want equality in all areas, and now you are equal in the eyes of the court there. Uh, today's birthdays, although we have one wedding on, wedding on this date, when in 2016, Rupert Murdoch married model Jerry Hall. Man. She was 59. She was formerly married to Mick Jagger. Correct. And he was 84. Is he still alive? He is still alive. If you recall, he recently wow. got engaged and then called it off like within three months. Maybe not even that. It doesn't sound like you recall. No, I don't. We did that story. Just because he was like, you know, succession-ish. Today's birthdays, we have Tom Greaves, 76. Glenn Humplick, his assistant. (laughs) He's absolutely on my Griffey list. Yeah. Mm, Yeah, for sure. You're familiar with the Griffey Bonds list? Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's classic. Good. But for those who aren't, just a uh, reset, just to lay it on the podcast, it's uh, it's kind of like a... It's a level of uh, confidence or lack of confidence that you would have that somebody would be involved in something nefarious, particularly as it relates to sexual deeds. With Ken Griffey, we all would have been crushed, surprised, Heartbroken if we found out that he dabbled in steroids. With Barry Bonds, we knew basically from the entire time <laughs> that he was a giant, this guy's on steroids. So Tom Grieve, Griffey. And Cosby is a Griffey. Cosby, was, I mean. You think he was a Griffey? Yeah. It's not fail safe. For sure. He right. was a Griffey unless you knew about the Spanish fly bit. <laughs> That's true. Which was in a stand up routine of his. Most which people, I've, I found yeah. incredible that that preceded the Cosby show. Right. If you grew up with him on your TV as Theo Huxtable, Huxtable then you're not Gr- Theo, uh, uh, whatever his name yeah. was, Dr. Huxtable, then you're Griffey. But Louis C.K. was always a Bond. Sure. Uh, yeah, you kind of looked at him like, yeah. Yeah, you could probably. Okay, here's another. There's something deviant about him. Louis C.K., Bonds, Larry David, Griffey. Yeah. You think so? I think so. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Just because he seems like asexual. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like he's he'd meet to anyone. Right. 
Uh, but Tom Grieve, absolutely a Griffey. No doubt. Yeah. It would, it would D- crush me. Dave Raymond? <laughs> Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> He's got wow. some game. <laughs> We're just going through the whole booth. Jared Sandler? Griffey. Griffey. Absolutely. Soon to be former cowboy Michael Gallup is 28. <laughs> Nick Castellanos is 32. Wow. Uh, Boy, could have done that for the open or the break. It's always another day. Play it unedited now. <laughs> That's true. We could do that. <laughs> Hypothetically. <laughs> it's not us. No. We're just reporters. Has, has that word been said on nope. the potty? <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> Jay Gruden is 57. Man. <laughs> Fighting with RG3 on Twitter now. Like, consistently. Oh, yeah. There's a really funny photo of him uh, outside of a bar in Washington, D.C. when he was the coach. And he's doing the thing where you sit up against, like, a, a wall. Like, this type move right here. Which is, like, the most beaten thing you can do, you know? Like, on the ground, he's just smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Wow. Jay Gruden. Yeah. Like a Ben Affleck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sort of like that, except he's sitting down. That's awesome. Where is he? He's Twitter. <laughs> like he's not in the game anywhere? He's not no. Division he Two coach? He didn't, he's... he didn't start OCing the Giants or something? No, I don't think so. I mean, he probably collects a check as like an analyst. Draymond Green is 34. Here's my sports question for you, Mr. Basketball. <laughs> Would Draymond Green be a Hall of Famer if he was drafted by Memphis? Probably not. No way. Because he certainly thought of as a first ballot Hall of Famer right now. Is that yeah. because of the championships or because of the stats? Well, the stats aren't exactly great. Yeah. But it's how he's meshed with that particular team. Like, it's just the absolute perfect storm for him. Yeah. Like, he'd still be a good player. Very good player. Like, is he ever, even ever an all-star? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just he's during a, that run. A, was he ever I just can't, defense Like, now yeah, he's not. Team. Yeah. Yeah, he was that for sure. Like, he's not a current all-star. No. 2022 was the last time. But he has been NBA defensive first team four times. And second team Pretty four good. more times. McKelty Williamson is 67. Don't know it. I have written here, Con Air guy <laughs> with diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay, the old guy? No, no the, the the black guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't remember the diabetes part. Well, that was the thing is he had to get his medicine. Oh uh, yeah, and they couldn't get it to him. That was like the whole yeah the reason, right? <laughs> he was very good friends with Cameron Poe. Yeah, Patricia Heaton is sixty six. Final line was, um. Yeah, pretty funny, huh, bitch? <laughs> and then that's what good memory. Sid the virus turns around, and shoots him. No, uh, that's funny. It's uh, Cyrus. The Cyrus virus. the virus. Sid the virus doesn't Sid. exactly roll off the tongue. <laughs> Sid the, same. the vid. <laughs> uh, Patricia Heaton. What TV the, mom was she? Everybody loves Raymond. Right? Oh yeah, is that okay? Mm-hmm. Fan. Yeah, pretty hot. <laughs> They had a good run of TV moms. Are they yeah. not doing it anymore? TV moms are great. Like, yeah, I guess I guess all I, I TV no moms idea. have always been hot. Yeah, I mean, I think of Meredith well, Baxter Burney for uh, Family Ties. That's probably a little before your time. <laughs> There's then a you couple. Move up to Raymond. Yeah, like Tim the Tool Man's wife wasn't bad. Yeah, for sure. But there's a couple, obviously, that cut against the grain, namely Roseanne. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> John Goodman wasn't really like... You know. No, no, but neither was Kevin James. That's true. Hey. And he was bagging ace. <laughs> uh, Patty Kensit is 56. Can I tell Patsy. you that like, I don't even know where Roseanne took place, but in my mind, it was Ohio. Hmm. Feels like, Ohio. Like every Very time Midwest, I watched that yeah. show growing up, I was like, this is probably what Ohio's like. Very yeah. Midwest. You're right. The dumpy basement. Yeah, the basement, wood paneling. Beating people. You're beating people. Uh, Patsy Kensett is the hot chick in Lethal Weapon 2. Ooh. 
from South Africa. And then she was we able have to outrun quite a few bullets. <laughs> I watched that movie recently, as you know. Rick Perry is seventy four. Ah, Ooh. adios. Had a ranch. Is he the original Adios Mofo? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, man, the the audio of him talking about cutting the Department of Energy. That's just. I wonder if we could pull that up. Kiss. Maybe for tomorrow. And he just goes, "Oops." <laughs> Find that, Blake. He was out of his uh, depths a little bit then. Dancing um, with the Stars, by the way. What's that? When he was running for president? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was one of the Republican debates. Yeah. Where Trump is just bodying. <laughs> so, you're probably going to say this is insane when I tell you this. So, Rick Perry, it's his birthday, died on this day. Luke Perry. That is insane. I could have never imagined that that would happen. He said he wanted to make it to Rick Perry's birthday. <laughs> and he did. Quote, unquote. Weren't you a big 90210 guy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not judging. I yeah, just, no, I've I'm, never really absolutely. met anybody who watched it. A little Melrose that Place, a little 90210. Speaking of uh, cultural moments in TV, right? What's that? 90210 was huge. Yeah, and it did feel like that was kind of an era. That, like, from there led to, like, uh, the CW and, yeah. like, Dawson's Creek and... yeah. That's yeah, where where everybody could watch rich, Hots. rich kids in high school yeah. have sex and deal with their problems. The OC came out. Yeah. Also died on this day. We have John Candy, dude. Mm, greatness. Shockingly young. What? What's? Died at the age of forty three. Uh, yeah, but like, didn't you, like, when you watched John Candy in a movie? Oh, you didn't? Yeah, he looks Eight old. years before he died, you're like, oh, this guy's probably 50 now. Yeah, yeah. But he was sure. like 37. Yeah. No go, Blake? No, I don't, there's just no clear evidence that this is going to be in this video. All right, well, we'll watch. We'll uh, we'll say now that we're going to research mm. it and play it tomorrow, and we'll just forget. Sure. Uh, and then, uh, born on this day, not alive anymore, we have Gil Brandt. Mm. You died. know... Last year. Then, was he living to? And that was <laughs> he was living to die. In history. <laughs> For 90 years. Oh, that's or, great. So, anyway, uh, let me thoughts? see. Wait, 70. Yeah, he was 90 something. Crazy. Closing remarks from Ethan. What do you think of the den? Oh, These great. aren't your closing remarks. Now I'm just asking. This is you. just question time. Have you ever. What what did you envision it? I actually envisioned it a little smaller than it is because you guys just keep saying how small it is. But I walked in. I didn't. I didn't envision this whole computer area over here. Yeah, that know? that's new. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it used to be a different area, but yeah, that's. I love. I mean, Video Man has set I don't, that up. I could spend all day and not see everything in here, so it's really cool. It's fun. This is dream come true. Okay, that was just a question. Okay, now. Closing remarks. Closing. I, I made a list on my notes app, by the way. I like that. I, this was coming, so <laughs> just going to fire fire these down. Nardwar, awesome. Thanks, Thank Jake. you. Okay. I got a Nardwar fan. We got, if you haven't, How to Basic, classic YouTube, and Cartnarks. You got to look up Cartnarks. Is it people, is it like grocery? It's the people that are like stopping people from leaving carts. Not in the turnstile thing. Okay, I've I seen that. It. Have it's you? It's so funny. Is it the, uh, he sounds gay? Yeah, guy? a little bit, yeah. Or, I'm sorry. Effeminate? <laughs> Don't take this wrong, Blake. <laughs> hey, I've gotten I've gotten it too. He could sound like a fun Blake, right? Like he's a just the just a little more fun. Uh, gay and boring. <laughs> it just, cool. No, just like a more of a... <laughs> he said fun Blake. Hey, what you doing there? No, but he's comparing yeah, that's him. A, I'm putting that's the magnet on your car. Blake, though. <laughs> Uh, youth ministry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's youth, the youth ministry is a great way to put it. That's he, He's perfect. You should watch that. It's Have really you funny. It? No, I just pulled it up, though. So. And then How, okay, to, how to Basic is just one of my like, faves. Oh, Mr. Grumpy Pants. Like, yeah. he, the guys will be chasing him pissed that he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he calls them Lazy Bones all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, real quick, Blake's intros, I support you, Parks and Rec. The, this is how you eat it. Quality. Thank you. Um, PB on Waffles with Syrup. 
Big oh, yeah. fan. Ugh, Huge fan. God, yeah. even just hearing it. Um, I'd rather talk squirting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big front parking guy, not back end parking guy. I feel like back end parking guys are just showing off. They 100%. are. <laughs> it's all the optics. And then I did a four work, four day work week thing for, with my job for about 10 months. Did you it hate was, it? Uh, it was okay, but I'll just say this. It's not as cool. That day you have off when you're just sitting alone, it's kind of depressing. So you have 10-hour days? No, no, no. Four? Eight-hour, four-day work week. You know, just basically cut it down for a little while. We tried it. There were some problems. We went back, but it wasn't as awesome as I thought it was. What day did you get off? Uh, Me, it was Friday. I feel like I would stack that with stuff I could get done, though. I try. Yeah, that's the thing. I would do yard work. That was, like, the one thing. And then Saturday, you're not having to do anything, so... It was a little bit beneficial, but, and, uh, last thing I, w- I used to work at, uh, A&M athletics and I knew coach banks. He was awesome. I just want to say that the, uh, monkey, monkey, monkey coach. <laughs> yeah. Monkey coach. Yeah. He sounds awesome. He was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He no, was, I never really had a doubt. <laughs> he was the chillest of all the coaches. It was some of staff. And like he he's a dating chillest. a stripper and it has a monkey. Yeah. I think and you're was, like, you I had th- to tell us he was awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But he was just the chill, like he was the guy that put his feet up. And he's like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, way cooler than I heard. He's an awesome recruiter coach. too. Yeah, like yeah. They always said that the best, for sure. Which again makes sense. <laughs> yeah, he was awesome. Boy, he delivered. Yeah, he did. I got a lot of <laughs> thanks, Ethan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good time. Thanks, thanks for the Welcome. website. All right. Adios, mofo. <laughs> Thank you.